WVC Sports presents High School Football. Tonight's game is brought to you by patrons Buckeye Mutual Insurance, Doan Ford, WB Green Insurance, West 40 Auto Sales, People's Bank, Laborers Local 530, 45 Logistics, Ross Agri Mechanics, Greg's Motor Sales, and Guernsey Muskingum Electric Cooperative. of the high school football season as we kick off the second half of the regular season with the West Ham Tornadoes visiting the Maysville Panthers. I'm Dave Hilliard and along with my partner Mike Pavlasiak, we have all the action on Nash Icon 98.5 and 107.9 and also free live video stream tonight on the YRP TV YouTube channel. And this is our pregame show sponsored by 45 Logistics. Plaz, both teams enter tonight's contest having won last week. Maysville knocked off Crooksville 20 to nothing, and West Ham shut out a previously unbeaten Philo team 21 to nothing. What do you think these teams need to do to come away with a win tonight? I tell you, I was very fortunate to see that game last week with team at, between uh, West Ham and Philo, and uh, the, the Tornadoes were very, very impressive last week. I tell you, they have without a doubt probably the best athlete in the MVL this year in Rashid Cisse and uh, got a chance to see him last week. He is the real deal. And that's what I'm looking forward to, too, because I've heard uh, some of our announcing cohorts, they say that Cissé is the player in the MVL this year. He's got almost 1,000 yards in offense through five weeks of the season, 681 rushing yards, 12 rushing touchdowns, 133 receiving yards, and two receiving touchdowns, and a 93 uh, well, one t touchdown return, and I don't know if it was 93 yards or not, but his total yardage is almost 1,000 yards through five weeks of the season. Got a chance to talk to uh, Coach Brownrigg after that game last week, and he said they had just installed a new offensive set the week before. It's a, it's a wildcat set with Cissé receiving a snap from center. And I tell you what, he is just so good. He's a very, very patient runner, allows the blocks to take place in front of him. And uh, he'll be, I think that's the key for Maysville tonight. If they are going to stay in this football game, they have got to neutralize Cissé somehow. They've got to find a way. Nobody else has done that so far yet. But uh, And also a little interesting note there on West Ham. I, I talked with Coach Nate Brownrigg earlier in the week, and he said, uh, was telling me that Cord McKenzie, Colin Thornton, Connor McKenzie, they all have 30-plus starts on the offensive and defensive lines as they have started since they were freshmen. And I tell you, any football coach would love to have experience up front on the offensive and defensive line, and that's what West Ham's got. Exactly. You know, last week they completely dominated Philo. They came out, had 359 total yards for the night. They held a very good, and, and at the time, an undefeated Philo team to only 105 total yards. Now, everyone might be thinking, okay, West Ham's got this game, but Maysville starting to get in a groove themselves. Last week they went to Crooksville, and you got to see West Ham last week. I got to see um, the Panthers last week as they beat Crooksville 20 to nothing. And a couple of the key players that we're going to see tonight. Uh, first of all, Matthew Harper, the quarterback, and he started off, they were splitting some time, and, and you and I both know that when you play two quarterbacks, you really have no quarterbacks. So they have now settled on Matthew Harper as the quarterback, and he is a weapon as a kicker. Plus, he can kick the ball into the end zone in the air. He kicked two field goals last week. He's got four for the season. And I saw him, and this was in a high school football game, which still blows me away. He attempted a 52-yard field goal last week. And when it was in the air, I thought it had a chance. So um, he's a special athlete. He's got some, they have some skilled people. Uh, Todd Saxon has now moved back into a running back position instead of playing quarterback. And then Kaysen Hurdle, he was our player of the game last week. He's a linebacker and a wing back in this wing T offense for the Panthers. And he had a great game last week, hit some really big runs for some key first downs in that football game and enabled them to keep Crooksville at bay as they won that football game 20 to nothing. And you know, lots of games. We have this game tonight here on, in Southtown on ABC. We also have got Meadowbrook at John Glenn on 97.7 WILE, and that's on YouTube as well. Shady Sides at Barnesville, that's on 93.5 WBNV. And Connaughton Valley visits Caldwell tonight. It's, that's on KC105 and also on YRP TV YouTube. And also some MVL games. Coshocton is at New Lex. Tri-Valley is at Morgan. Crooksville is at Philo. And Sheridan visits 
uh, Riverview, and boy, that game could get out of hand quickly. Sheridan 5-0, and oh, Riverview 0-5. Oh, oh, that could be ugly. That could be a tough one there as uh, Meadowbrook kind of had their way with Riverview last week. Um, this is, again, this is our 45 Logistics pregame show. We will take a quick break, and we'll be get back here in just a minute to, for some more pregame show, and we'll talk about the matchup a little bit more. And We're almost ready for that opening kick as well. You're watching and listening to High School Football on ABC Sports. Hey, you. Yeah, you. This is your dentist. Do me a favor and feel the front of your teeth. How grimy are they? Ugh. It's time for a Crest Pro Health reality checkup. That grime is the buildup of plaque bacteria that can cause cavities in just months. You need to switch to Crest Pro Health. While most toothpaste stop working in minutes, Crest Pro Health's antibacterial fluoride protects for up to 12 hours to stop cavities before they start. So pick some up on the way home. Smile, Crest has you covered. We're going abroad for the first time in years to Spain. So we started using Babbel. And started learning Spanish fast. With Babbel, you can start having conversations in another language in just three weeks. ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿Cómo te llamas? When you learn a language, you want to actually use it. Babbel is designed with that goal in mind. In just three weeks, we're starting to have conversations in Spanish. Gracias, Babbel. Babbel, language for life. Now try Babbel for free at Babbel.com. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. I was sitting in my car, and it wouldn't start. I lifted the hood, and the engine was falling apart. What would I do? My eyes filled with tears. And on the radio, I heard of West 40 by pay here. We're for a little money down and a little each week. I can have a car, nice, shiny, and sleek. So I walked in the door, and I put the money down. Now I got a nice car that I can drive around. West 40 by pay here will help rebuild your credit. The corner of Dewey and Route 40 in Cambridge, don't you forget it. West 40 Auto Sales, corner of Route 40 and Dewey Avenue in Cambridge, is home of a guaranteed credit approval, with most loans approved while you wait. Go to their website to fill out an online loan application, west40autosales.com. You'll also find their weekly special listed there. High School Football from ABC Sports and WYLE Cambridge, 107.9 Cambridge, 98.5 Zanesville, Nash Icon. Dave Hilliard back here at Southtown. Maysville Panthers entertaining the West Muskingum Tornadoes tonight in some MVL football. And again, this is our 45 Logistics pregame show, and we really appreciate them sponsoring our pregame show, uh, getting ready for that opening kickoff. And tonight, opening kickoff and all kickoffs sponsored by Valentine Insurance. And teams out there, we were just talking about the uniforms, Plaz, Maysville, they look like the San Diego Chargers, those old powder blue uniforms. I, I love that color, and I love the numbers because we can see them. Now, West M, you got some nice uniforms. They're all in white. They've got the yellow numbers that are trimmed in blue. But the announcers, everybody up in this press box, we've got another radio station to our right. We've got TV guys to our left. Everyone's complaining about the West M uniforms because you can't see the numbers very well. So our listeners are going to bear with us a little bit tonight, Dave, because we are going to do the best our, our, we can to see those numbers. But hopefully <laughs> when the sun goes down, that uh, that will be a little more visible. Well, West M is going to be kicking the ball off in this football game. Number 21, their place kicker for West M. And he's a, a, a Silas Kuhn. He's the kicker. 5'7", I was saying, he's a pretty thin young man. He goes at 115 as his weight listed in the program. So um, I'm thinking he's not going to be a defensive lineman as he well as not, the kicker no. tonight. But Silas probably has a good foot. He's in charge of the kick duties, and that's going to get this game underway as he'll kick it off for West Ham in their white uniforms that will be kicking over there to the Maysville Panthers. And that's, as we said, their San Diego Charger uniform. He approaches the football on our Valentine Insurance kickoff. This game is underway, and it's going to be caught all the way down at about the 10-yard line, brought up across the 15 to the 20, out to the 25. That was brought back by number five. That was Landon Iden. He was the returning. And our game is underway here. Maysville going to set up shop first and 10 on their own 25-yard line to start this MBL football game. Boy, nice deep kickoff that time by uh, Kuhn. Nice down kick. About the four-yard line, yeah. Good coverage by the... Uh, West Dem Tornadoes kickoff team, so here we go. Maysville going to set up shop first and 10, their own 25-yard line. Number two, Matthew Harper, he's running the show as the quarterback. He's got Todd Saxon right behind him, 
And he's got wing backs there, Armstead and Hurdle. Snap back, he's gonna throw it on first down. He's got DeBolt out on the, flat, on the left flat across the 30 yard line out to the 31. Nice pitch and catch there for an easy six yards. And that's gonna be just second and short here now for um, the Panthers out across the 30 yard line to the 31. Wing T teams that he came out, Coach Clark, you know, wanted to throw a little bit of a curveball, I think, to start with because yeah. uh, most of your wing T teams uh, do not throw the ball very much at all. You expect that's going to be some sort of motion in the backfield and those counters and all those things, and that's more like the wing T we're going to see as he hands the ball off and nothing doing there. He gets wrapped up at the 31 yard line. I'm trying to see who that was coming around there on the carry, and that was number four, Kaysen Hurdle. He was our player of the game last week down at Crooksville. He had a great game, but he had little or no room there. Might have picked up a couple, so it's going to be third and short here for the Panthers. Ball marked at the 33-yard line. And this is kind of the pace that Maysville would like. They're not going to get in a big hurry. You know, a lot of these teams now, everybody sprints to the line of scrimmage, and they call the line. Maysville old school, they're going to bring the play in with a player. They're going to have a huddle. They're going to do all those things that you see back in, you know, some old school football and almost the same play again. He hands it to Hurdle again, and Hurdle this time has enough room to get out over the 35-yard line. They're working that left side, Plaz, and that time it was for a first down. Good patience shown by Hurdle that time. Actually, uh, the hole was all clogged up to begin with, gave a chance to, to get a little crease and got enough for a first down. Got it out across the 35-yard line to the 36, so that's first and 10, and that's a WB Green Insurance first down for the Maysville Panthers. They set up now on the 36, first and 10. Harper surveying the screen, and he gets under center. Again, there comes that hurdle in motion again, and hurdle this time going to be wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. They tried that left side again, Plaz, but no room there for hurdle, and that's no gain, so they're going to mark it at the 36, and it's second and 10 now for the Panthers. Coach Clark, of course, a big proponent for the uh, wing T offense. Spent several years coaching at Coshocton under head coaches Wade Lucas and uh, John Kelly. And uh, they, they run it very well. And we might see a little bit different formation this time. The receiver over to the right. Harper under center. There goes Hurdle in motion. He's going to drop back. He looks to throw it. He's throwing that slant, and it's intercepted. Stepped in at, right at the 48-yard line there, an interception there. I think it was nice Connor Hill. There. Connor Hill steps in. A little bit let him, but just a little bit too much for that pass. But that is an interception, and that means West M going to take over in Maysville territory on the 48-yard line. Nice play there by, uh, that was again, you said that was Hill. Yes, it was Hill. Number yes. zero, Hill with the interception, and that's going to put the West M. And here's what we've been waiting to see here. Again, Plaz, uh, myself, you got to see him last week, but I want to see number three, Rashad Cisse, Rashid Cisse, and I'm sure he's going to carry the ball uh, on this drive for sure. West, West M first down, Anton, the quarterback. It's a high snap, and he gets it down, and he hands it to Winland. Winland across the 45 down to the 40-yard line. Nice run there by Winland. And Winland, I, I would probably call Winland the thunder and Cissé the lightning in this offense. Yeah, they, they lift Winland at 5'8", 200 pounds. And I tell you what, he had a nice game last week against Philo. 15 carries, 94 yards, and a touchdown. Nice run there to start the football game for him. He's going to bring up second and short for the Tornadoes. Anton, junior quarterback, he runs the show for West M. Back in a shotgun this time. Cissé in motion. It's going to be a jet sweep. He flips it to Cissé. Cissé brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Nice play there. And that was Harper. He was quarterbacking a minute ago, threw the interception, turned the ball over. This time, as a linebacker, he steps up and makes the play on Cissé for a loss of a couple of yards. You don't expect to see a quarterback make that kind of a hit on defense. I tell you what, he stuck his nose right in there. Yes, he did. Nice play there from Todd Sachs, and he makes a nice tackle there. Of course, I'm sure that was Cissé is a marked man tonight. I'm sure they're going to be keeping an eye on him wherever he goes across the field tonight because that was pretty much when he came in motion, and again, there goes Cissé in motion, and they throw in the pass this time, and it's across the middle. Tried to get that slant, and it was not there. He was incomplete. He was looking for... I was trying to see who he was looking for there. That was number four, I believe, that he was looking for. 
And they're going to have to punt here, so fourth and five, and not risking anything early in the football game in terms of field position here, Plass. You no, know, I'll change this over here. Yeah, you don't want to risk it going for it and give uh, Maysville good field position right away again. West M in punt formation now. And they've got number 27 back there is going to punt the football. And that's Carter Smith, and he's got to put his foot into it just across midfield. It's an end over end kick, and it's going to land at the 15 and bounce forward. And it's picked up. Boy, that was a dangerous play. And I'm sure he just didn't want the ball going any farther. But that's dangerous when you're surrounded by the punt coverage team. Boy, he got away with it that time. Very lucky there. <laughs> He picks it up right there. That was Wesley Armstead, and he picked it up, got it out to the 10-yard line. So saved, well, they're going to mark that at the 9-yard line. So it's going to be, you know, he, he might have saved a couple of yards, but that was a dangerous play. Plus. That's what causes coaches to lose their hair. <laughs> I can justify that. <laughs> Maysville now first and 10 from their own 9-yard line, and I don't think you want to do anything too fancy with your back against your own goal line here. Here comes the Panthers lined up in offense. That wing tee, and they're going to hand it off straight ahead, and I believe that was to Saxon. Saxon, not much room there. Might have picked up one yard to the 10, and that's going to bring up second to nine, and that was Saxon on the carry. Just across the 10-yard line, so I'll give him a couple there to the 11, and that's going to bring up second and eight for the Maysville Panthers. You know, the thing with the wing tee, too, very few teams run it, so it's a difficult offense, really, to prepare for. And you have to you have to be really assignment football on defense. Yes. You've got to play your position there very well against the wing tee, and teams that execute it very well. Usually, if you follow your guards, you can find the football. Harper back. He's going to drop back, and he's rolling to his right. He's looking to throw the football. He throws it, and he gets his man at about the 13-yard line. He threw it just a little bit low. And he was trying to get it to DeBolt. DeBolt, a little bit low for him to handle, so that falls incomplete, and that's going to bring up third down and eight. And this is one of those where you got to make a decision, Plaz, because you're deep in your own territory. You'd like to get some space. You'd like to move the chains, but at the same time, you can't afford a turnover back here in this territory. And throwing the football is really not their game, so this is a very difficult decision here for Coach Clark what to do. Well, we were talking last week, that's what Crooksville would have liked to have done is get them in long down and distance because they're not a throwing team, per se. But now this time they're going to come out in a throwing formation. This time Harper in the shotgun, and he's got four receivers. West Ham jumping around trying to make sure they've got everybody covered. Throws out into the right flat and is incomplete at the 20-yard line there. Harper looking for DeBolt out on that right flat. Just couldn't connect with him there. And again, that was off target, and it's just something Maysville does not like to do. Plaz. Exactly. Yeah, he had a little room out there. DeBolt did just the, the throw was delivered a little bit high. And as you said, most most wing T teams are not known to throw the ball very well. <laughs> That's not really their MO it's not, here. It's, it's, not, it's not a good offense when you're third and eight like they faced in that situation. All right, you're kicking it from your own 11. The punter's back in his end zone, and Cissé stands at the 40-yard line with a potential return. Rugby-style kick, and the foot goes into it and nice pushes kick. Cissé all the way back across midfield. And that ball hit and bounced backwards like one of my wedge shots, Plaz. <laughs> yeah. Hit it about midfield and dropped, jumped back to the 47-yard line where it's going to be marked. West M, the benefit of a field position battle here so far is they're going to set up shop first and 10 on the 47-yard line of Maysville. Yeah, the good thing he did there, he avoided kicking the ball to Mr. Cissé. Yep, he got it away from him. And that's uh, that rugby-style kick sometimes, and that was Armstead as the punter. I, I that just makes me nervous sometimes. You even but. watch it at the college and the pro <laughs> level. Those guys seem like it's always close to being blocked. Wow, it's almost every single time, isn't it? So, all right, this time four receivers, two on each side for Anton, and he's going to hand it off straight ahead. And there's Winland across the left side, and he picks up about four yards working hard. Not much room there, but he made something out of nothing. And Winland again, he's the thunder in that backfield. Cissé is the lightning. And they did pick up about four yards there. Second down and six now for the Tornadoes. The Tornadoes have yet to show that wildcat formation they used so prevalently last week. Cissé lined up on the left side of the formation. Anton snap back. He's going to run it himself. He's got a lead block there. Nice block there from Carter Winland to lead the way. Anton's going to get it across. That 
30, he's down to the 36 yard line. I was gonna say he got it across the 35, he got to the 36. So that's enough for the first down though. And it's gonna be first and 10 tornadoes now. And there's our first first down of the game, Plaz. It took a while, didn't it? And that's a WV Green Insurance first down for the West Ham Tornadoes. West Ham now trying to build on some momentum here. They got a first down. The ball's on the 36 yard line of the Maysville Panthers. The sun is finally set behind the hill and we've got, it's a little bit easier to see some of the numbers, but really still not that great. Cisse in motion, they use him as a little fake there to try to throw a bubble screen onto the left flat and it's incomplete. Nice job there by the Panthers defense. Almost, that little bubble screen almost got picked off there, Plaz. Yes, it did, I got good coverage out there. I believe that was uh, Sammy Scott. Second down now on 10 for the Tornadoes. Cisse was more of a, a decoy on that play, Plaz. They put him in motion. It looked like maybe they were going to run that little jet sweep with him again. Instead, they try to throw it back to the side that he vacated for a little bubble screen, but incomplete now. Second and 10 for the Tornadoes. Jake Anton, junior quarterback, in the shotgun. He's going to hand it off. No, he kept it, but he put it on the ground. Fumbled right at the right at the 40 yard line, but Anton falls on it. It was one of those where I think he was trying to hold it in and read the defense, and then held it just a little bit too long and never got it back clean. So he puts it on the ground. That's a loss of four all the way back at the 40 yard line. I think Winland wanted to take it, and uh, Anton didn't want to give it up. <laughs> I think they had a little difference of opinion on that one. All right, spread formation. Five receivers now for Anton. Three to the left. Two to the right, Anton gonna put Cissé in motion. Fakes it to Cissé. He's gonna take a deep shot down the field. He's got a man out there, jumped up. Nice defensive coverage down there. Number 17, Caden Rock on the defensive coverage. Nowhere to get that ball in there. And Anton was looking down there for number zero. He was looking for Connor Hill. And there was just no room to fit that in. Great coverage there, and that's gonna bring up another punt. So the uh, Tornadoes have been beneficiaries of great field position, not able to do anything with it on either drive here in the first quarter. And again, Smith back there to punt again for the Tornadoes. And again, if they can get it back down there inside the 10, this time Armstead drops back to the five and he catches that. That would have gone into the end zone, but he runs it out instead and he gets it out to about the 17 yard line. And I think Wesley would have been better off if he just lets that one go into the end zone. That would have been a touchback. Yeah, I don't think he was aware of really where he was at on the field. He, uh, he fielded at it about the two-yard line. And without, like you said, without a doubt, that would have been in the end zone. So he's got it back out to the 17. So really about a difference of three yards Not in field much, position yeah. there. So, But he did take the chance. and uh, he, he didn't. At least he fielded that one in the air and didn't let it uh, short hop him he, like he, he did the last one. He doesn't look like a fair catch kind of guy no. to me so far <laughs> in those two times that they've had the football. Okay, Panthers back on offense now. Still deep in their own territory. Tough field position night for them so far. Harper hands it off. Working that left side again, and that's Hurdle again, and he gets around the left side for a nice pickup on first down. Gets it all the way to the 25-yard line. So that's a pickup of eight, and that's been the third time that we have seen that play, Plaz. It keeps that little uh, wing, wing motion that they put in there and they hand it to him and he's taking it to that left side and he's had plenty of success here so far in the early going running to his left. It seems like they found a little bit of weakness there in the uh, West Ham defensive front there on the right side because that's where they've had their most, their most success so far is going towards their left. We've got an injured player down on the field so we'll take a quick break here. You're watching and listening to High School Football on ABC Sports. How can you select from insurance companies offering you lizards or ducks? When it comes to protection for your home and auto, you want a company that provides quality insurance products and personalized, fair, friendly claims service. WB Green Insurance represents Westfield Insurance. Their reputation is based on sharing knowledge and building trust. Westfield has been around the neighborhood over 150 years. WB Green Insurance welcomes the opportunity to quote your home, car, and business insurance. Don't be fooled by lizards and ducks. Call 439-1329. 
Dave Hilliard back at Maysville High School. A beautiful facility here. This is just an outstanding place to come and watch a football game. There's a great scene, and if, and if the leaves were changing, we were talking about this, it would be a fantastic oh. setting, but there's a great view from up here on top of this hill. Beautiful facility here, and we'll do a little game reset here. There's 5-16 to play in this first quarter. No score yet. Uh, we've had more punts than first downs in this football game so far. And we still got an injured player down on the field, but uh, Kaysen, uh, excuse me, uh, on that last play there, Hurdle, uh, find some room on that left side, and that's where Maysville has had the most success in running the ball to the left, uh, running the ball straight ahead they haven't had much success with, and that's where they really made hay last week was with Saxton running the ball straight ahead, but not that's not been much not been much room there for them tonight, Platt. No, absolutely not. And that, like, like, like we said earlier, this uh, the wing tee office is really good if you get in good down and distance situations. And uh, it's not good when you're second or third and nine like they were in the last possession. But actually, the uh, the injured player now that they're helping off the field, that's number 27. That's Carter Smith, uh, a, a very good-looking young kid, just a, just a freshman wide receiver. Had a nice game last week against Philo. And he's also been the punter, so there might have to be a little adjustments made over yes. there on the sideline for West M. As he limps off, he's favoring one leg, but he is walking off the field, so we'll put it that way. Maysville now, second down and short here. Second and two from their own 25-yard line. And Maysville going to set up shop in that wing T formation. You got one receiver, and they put hurdle, excuse me, it's hurdle in motion again. They're going to hand it ahead to Saxon. Saxon finds some room across that left side, gets it over the 30-yard line and up to about the 32-yard line. So another nice pickup there that one time. That was Saxon picking up seven yards. He picked his way across the 30-yard line out to the 32. And there's a first down for the Maysville Panthers. AWB Green Insurance first down. Again, good, good, uh, good gain there going towards their left side. Scoreboard update here. Greg's Motor scoreboard update. Five minutes now to go in this first quarter. Still no score. Maysville first and ten on their own 32-yard line. Harper going to be under center. This time Armstead in motion, he's going to hand it to Armstead. Armstead running that right side, trying to turn the corner, and he does across the 35 to the 40. And those guys holding those first down markers have got to get to the ground. <laughs> Armstead ran right over the first down marker. I don't know if the guy just didn't think Armstead was going to get to him or what, but Wesley took the ball all the way out to the 42 and ran over the first down marker, and it is bent. They're trying to bend it back. <laughs> And I think they're going to mark it short, just short. So we'll, we'll say he got nine and a half there, and he also bent the first down marker. Might be a good place here for a little play action pass. Second and short, this might be that time. You're good. That's a good color analyst right there. That's, I think you're right. If you were going to take a shot down do the field. It. This would be the place right here. Second and short. They're trying to get well. They're going to measure actually now for a first down. <laughs> I'm looking at why, the, why would you move the ball and then decide now, now we're going to measure? Yeah. Now <laughs> the guy carrying the yard marker that got ran over that thing is bent in more directions. <laughs> I feel bad for the guy. I mean, he he just stood there and he he kind of got ran over a little bit by Armstead, and instead it is a first down. So it was a first down that Armstead picked up, along with bending that. <laughs> or the chain marker. So first and 10 now for the Panthers. That's a w, another WB Green Insurance first down for the Panthers. And now they're on the 42-yard line. And again, this still wouldn't be a good spot to take a shot with the pass. As Glass was pointing out there, either at second and short or maybe here on this first down. Because you got the safeties for West Ham. They're only about eight yards deep. Armstead going to hand it off to Saxon. Saxon straight ahead, just across that right side of the offensive line, and they're going to push him forward to about the 46-yard line. So a good positive play on first down, and that's what you want to do in any, any level of football, Plaz. You want to get started on first down. You want to get yourself in a good down and distance. Exactly, and that's what this offense is all about, the wing tee. You know, you want to get three or four yards of, you know, a, a, a play and uh, stay ahead of the change, which they've been able to do here so far on this drive. 4.13 to play here in the first quarter. Still no score, but Maysville got something cooking here on offense now. Second and six on their own 46-yard line. Harper under center. Armstead in motion. Harper going to throw it. He rolls to his left. Throws it back across to his that side, and he had a receiver out there at about the 45-yard line. 
but unfortunately, DeBolt unable to bring that one in, and now that's going to bring up a third down and six for the Panthers. That's such a hard throw for a right-handed quarterback. He didn't really get his shoulders squared up. When you roll to your left, it's very difficult to throw on the run. You got to throw it. You got to turn those shoulders, and when you're yeah. running full speed, it's such a hard thing to do. And he didn't quite get it turned well enough to where he could make an accurate throw. So Right, he had to bolt open out here in the left yep. flat. Off the mark, and it's going to be third and six. And it's more of a throwing down here, but still wing T formation. Here comes Hurdle in motion. And there's that counter play back to Armstead, and Armstead's gone Boy, nothing. They were ready for that. And that's they ran that play on a third and nine for a touchdown last week, Plaz, on one of their first possessions. And Armstead was the one that got the ball on that counter play then. But boy, West M, they sniffed it out. They knew what was coming there. No room for him to go. Well, you talked about earlier on defense, you have to be disciplined because, you know, you've got so much misdirection on that play. But a good job there by the defensive front of West M to stay at home. Nice job there by West M, forcing the punt here. Clock on the move, 3.23 to play in the first quarter. Armstead back there to punt the football. He goes through his legs. He's going to pick it up, and he still gets the punt off for that left foot, and it's a wounded duck that goes out of bounds, but Armstead did get the kick off. It was a little bit low, but he didn't quite go down and get it, and now all of a sudden West M got the stop and then still decent field possession out all did nice, that. Did a nice job there by Armstead actually to get it off <laughs> and uh, actually got a decent kick out of it. It could have been a lot worse. It absolutely could have been. <laughs> West M, the first down now on their own 38-yard line. Which is their worst starting field position so far tonight. Yep, they started on the 48 and the 47 of the Panthers here. And this is their worst field position. It's still almost out to the 40-yard line. Cisse going to take the direct snap, and he's going to hand it off. And he hands that off to Winland. Winland, he gets a little bit out of nothing there. He bounced around inside between the tackles, and he gets it across the 40-yard line. Cisse got the direct snap that time, and there's that wildcat formation you were talking about earlier, Plas. That's the first time we've seen it so far here tonight, but uh, gave the ball. I'll tell you what, there's three yards gained right there, and that was all because of Winland's toughness. Cisse going to stay back there, I believe, and he's going to play quarterback. He's going to be the one that's going to get this, and you got to feel that he's going to try to find something, some running room on his own here. But, boy, Maysville has the box stacked. High snap, but he went up and got it. Cisse avoids a tackle in the backfield, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that is going to be it. Snap almost over Cisse's head there, but... He did snatch it with one hand, and he got it back to the line of scrimmage. Took great athletic ability there by Cissé just to avoid that being a disaster. Cissé stays in there. Looks like he's, well, Anton back in the game. So looks like Anton is going to take that quarterback duty back over from Cissé. Cissé probably going to take a spot as a receiver, it looks like, in this formation, the way he is moving out to his left. Anton is back at quarterback, and he is deep in the shotgun. He's got Winland standing right next to him. Three receivers to his right, Cissé to his left. Steps back, he's gonna look for Cissé down the left side. Cissé is out there and he's wide open. He's got it at the 20, 10, five. Touchdown, Tornadoes. Oh my goodness. A 49, 50, 59 yard touchdown strike from Jake Anton to Rashid Cissé. And boy, there's that big playability that we were looking for, Plaz. Unbelievable, I mean, he just ran by a very good athlete there. In, uh, I think that was Landon or Caleb Monlocks. On yes, the, uh, I mean, he ran right by him. <laughs> like in track, coming out of the starter's block. There's no running with that young man. There was just, and I saw him run track last year at the regional track meet, and he's impressive. Kuhn, he's going to line up for this extra point, trying to make this a 7 to nothing game. Snap back, the placement is down, the kick is up, and it is good. And that's going to make our score 7 to nothing here with 137 left to play in the first quarter. We'll take a quick break. You're watching and listening to High School Football on ABC Sports. How can you select from insurance companies offering you lizards or ducks? When it comes to protection for your home and auto, you want a company that provides quality insurance products and personalized, fair, friendly claims service. WB Green Insurance represents Westfield Insurance. Their reputation is based on sharing knowledge and building trust. Westfield has been around the neighborhood over 150 years. WB Green Insurance welcomes the opportunity to quote your home, car, and business insurance. Don't be fooled by lizards and ducks. Call 439-1329. 
Big School Football. From ABC Sports and WYLE Cambridge. 107.9 Cambridge. 98.5 Zanesville. Nash Icon. Dave Hilliard back here at Maysville High School where the West Ham Tornadoes have just struck quickly there on a 59-yard pass from Jake Anton to Rashid Cisse. And they lead this game with that point after touchdown to 7-0. And there's our Valentine Insurance kickoff. And it's going to be handled down at about the 10-yard line. Out across the 20, now to the 25, bounces outside, trying to get loose, but they're going to be driven out of bounds right at about the 28-yard line. And that was number eight for Maysville. That was Tyler DeBolt on the return. West M got on the board first in this one there. A three-play, 59-yard drive. And, of course, the big play there, the third down conversion for a touchdown to Cissé. And, and, and that's the benefits of having a great athlete like Cissé. Really, the Panthers have done a pretty good job bottling up the offense of West M. And just with one play like that, lightning struck. Yes, it did. Maysville now facing a 7 to nothing deficit here with 1.29 to play until the end of this first quarter. There's that wing tee, and they're going to hand it off to Hurdle again. Hurdle on his right side, and they're trying to find that room like he has on that right, or excuse me, on that left side. But this time he is knocked down at about the 30-yard line. So a couple picked up there, but Hurdle not finding as much room as he has earlier on that left side of the offensive line there. Boy, nice job that time by the defensive tackle, Cord McKenzie staying at home and making that play. Second down and nine for the Panthers on their own 29-yard line. I thought he got it to the 30, but it's a 29. Harper under center again, and he's going to drop back and pass it. He got a man out on the right flat, but he overthrows it. He did not. He had his man, and it was one of, just one of those little short stop routes. Monlox was there, but boy, overthrown. And again, now you're looking at a really tough down and distance for a wing T offense again, Plaza. Exactly, because it's not built to uh, throw the football. It's built to run it, pick up chunks of yardage. Monlox actually was wide open out there in the right flat. They were giving him plenty of cushion, but uh, Harper just, just couldn't make the connection. Exactly. Harper now going to go shotgun this time. Three receivers to the right. He's still got the running back in the backfield with him, Saxton. Snap back, and he's going to roll to his right, and he's under pressure, and he lets it fly, and he's got oh. his man. Oh, my goodness. Wesley Armstead split the defenders, and the ball was there, but Armstead, it got through his hand somehow, and he wasn't able to bring it in, and that's going to be an incomplete pass. Could have been a tie ball game right there on that one, Plaz. I can't make out the defender's number right now. Again, we're having a hard time seeing as That looks like maybe number 13. That's uh, Devin yep. Bennett. I think he got his hand up just in the, uh, the, Did he get the receiver's of face, maybe just enough to distract him because the receiver was behind. Armstead now the back in punting formation here. This time he handles the snap, and he's got that rugby saw kick, and it almost got blocked. And there he gets that nice roll. It rolls across the 40, 35, all the way down to the 29-yard line. So West M going to have first down here with 34 seconds to play in this first quarter on their own 29-yard line. And that... <laughs> <laughs> Coach Clark down here talking to Armstead says, you may want to try to kick that just you, a little bit quicker. You may <laughs> want to punt that before the, the, you know, there was three guys that seemed in his face right there, and he did manage to get the kick off. And it's one of those low-running rugby-style uh -huh. kicks, but my goodness. I don't know how West Dem did not get a hand on that to block it. No. They had plenty of opportunity. <laughs> they did. West Dem, first and ten now from their own. 29-yard line, 34 seconds to play in this first quarter. Anton back in there, and he's going to fake that snap, and he's looking to throw the ball across the middle of the field, and it's a little bit high. And I think he was looking for his man, and again, I think that was number zero, I that believe, zero Connor Hill. Again. That was Connor Hill he was looking for. And again, it's so tough to see those West Muskingum numbers. Oh but that was Hill he was looking for, a little bit high, couldn't make that connection. So Anton now and his offense facing a second and 10 from their own 29-yard line. That's not the kind of pass the receiver's looking for when he's coming across the middle. No, he Leads wants to stay low. and exposed, yes. <laughs> Anton this time. He's got four receivers out there. 
motion. Now he's going to put Cisse in motion. He faked it to Cisse and he keeps it. He gets it across the 30 to 35, 36 yard line. Nice run by Jake Anton there. And again, Cisse a decoy. And I'm sure the defense had pretty much in mind that he was going to hand it to Cisse, but he kept it himself and he got it across the 36 yard line. Yeah, Cisse's only had two carries so far for actually negative two yards, but he was able to come up with the big play that has the uh, tornadoes on top 7 nothing. And that's going to be the end of our first quarter here. West Muskingum leading Maysville 7 to nothing. We'll take a quick break as you're watching and listening to High School Football on ABC Sports. Hey, football fans, laborers. Local 530 in Zanesville, Ohio, is cheering on all the local high school teams this year. Serving Muskingum, Perry, Noble, and Guernsey counties, Local 530 represents around 400 skilled men and women in the building and construction trades. They work with over 100 signatory contractors, providing committed and experienced laborers for building, heavy highway, and pipeline construction. For more information, give them a call at 740-453-1214. Good luck to all the teams from Laborers Local 530. Calling all truck drivers. If you're looking for a change, 45 Logistics in Zanesville wants you to join their team. 45 Logistics is a family-owned regional trucking company in Zanesville. Enjoy being home every weekend with no team runs and no hazmat endorsement required. Earn 54 cents per mile, plus health benefits, paid vacation, and safety bonuses. For more information, call 740-647-1430 or online at 45dli.com. Everyone at 45 Logistics wants to wish the local teams good luck this football season. Dave Hilliard, Mike Blasiak back here at Maysville High School. Second quarter, ready to get underway here. West M leads this football game 7 to nothing, courtesy of a 59-yard pass from Jake Anton to Rashid Cisse. West M now facing third and short here. Cisse going to take that direct snap. He's in that Wildcat formation, and he's going to throw the football left. He just flips it out to his left, and it's caught at the 39-yard line, but that's going to be short of the first down. He got that to Wes Houston. Cisse, a lefty, or at least he threw that one left-handed, and Houston going to be down at the 38-yard line. Cisse didn't get enough on that football, and now Fourth down, and West Ham looks like they're going to roll the dice here with Cisse in this Wildcat formation. He's got two receivers to his right, and he almost drew the Maysville defenders off there as he clapped, and he's trying to get them to jump. And I think that's all that they were intending to do, Plaz, was try to get them to jump offside. Maysville doesn't oblige, so I think they're going to punt the football. Good distance shown that time by the defense in front of, uh, of Maysville. Well, you know, they're loaded up to stop him, and they're just thinking, I got to make a play. I got to make a play. And if you clap, you might get him to jump off there. Little scoreboard update here from Greg's Motors. 11 19 to play in the second quarter. West Ham leads this one 7 0. And I see Plaza has got a couple of scores here for us. John Glenn leading Meadowbrook 21 0. And I see Philo ahead of Crooksville 10 0. Sheridan was at 3 0 there, I saw early. So. All those early in the football game, Monroe Central leading their game 14 to nothing as well. Us, it's seven to nothing here, West Muskingum, and they're going to be kicking the football away here. Even with Cisse, I really thought that's a reach if they're going to try to go for it on fourth down in a in a one score football. Especially, game. yeah, you've got the lead right now. I mean, you're not really pushing the panic button. The last thing they'd want to do here but is again, to give Maysville a real good field position. Here but they come out, here, yeah, in a power formation with Cisse. He's going to take that snap. And they're going to go for it. It's a high snap. But Cisse has got it. He makes a move. He breaks through it. He's got it. 45, 50. He's gone. Good he night. is gone. Good night. That is a touchdown. A 62-yard field or field. I was going to say field goal. A 62-yard run from Rashid Cisse on a fourth and one or two there. He broke through that line of scrimmage, and after that, it was over with. It was unbelievable. I mean, what good patience shown that time by Cissé. He got the snap. And it was a everything. little bit high. It was, and it allowed everything to happen in front of him. Boy, and when he saw a crease, good night. It was over with. In for the extra point here again to try to make this a 7 to nothing football game. Places down, the kick is up, and it is good. And that's going to make the score 14 to nothing here, courtesy of Rashid Cisse once again with his second touchdown of the night. West Ham leads this game 14 to nothing. We'll take another quick break. You're watching and listening to high school football on ABC Sports. I'm not buying till I check down for 
Most of us are faced with uncertainty every day. Your job, your finances, sporting events, schooling for your children, and so much more. With so much uncertainty surrounding you, there's one auto dealership that you can be certain about, and that's Doan Ford. You can be certain that you'll always get a great deal and the best service afterwards. In business for nearly 60 years has given Doan Ford the reputation of being a strong, reliable dealership. Be certain. Choose Doan Ford. Online at DoanFord.com. Dave Hilliard back here at Maysville High School, West M, and there was the Lightning in the Thunder and Lightning duo again. Oh. Cisse on fourth and short in their own territory. A lot of confidence in that young man. High snap, he brought it down, still was patient, and then broke through the line of scrimmage, and it was over with. Boy, there's nothing more fun than to coach a good athlete. <laughs> and there's that kick again. Kuhn with the kick. And it's going to be brought down on about the 20-yard oh, line. And great he, coverage. Ooh, that was a fantastic open field tackle. It looked like he was going to, they were maybe trying to set up a return to the right and come back that direction. But no, man, oh, man, that was a nice coverage play there from West Muskingo. And I think, Dave, I know we're still early, but I think this is a crucial drive here for Maysville. Already down two scores, and with the type of offense they run, it's not a good offense to try to come behind with because it's not geared to make big plays. Right, and as we've seen already, they've struggled throwing the football. They, and yes. You can't just try to methodically drive down the field when you're down two touchdowns. Yeah, they were, right now I've got them one for seven through the airway so far in, in the first quarter. Maysville setting up shop now on their 18-yard line, first and 10, and their first possession in the second quarter, and they're going to hand it to Saxon, and he got maybe a yard on that carry. And that's going to bring up second and nine here for the Panthers. Not a good start for this drive in terms of the kick return. Nice coverage there from West Ham. And then that first play from scrimmage, only picking up about a yard. Panthers now. This, and as you said, this might be one of those situations where they need to score. Because And if you don't pick up a couple first downs here, you're going to punt it and give... West Ham real good field position again right away. At least you at least need a first down here. Yeah. And Matthew Harper this time gets it off to his left through his right side and it's going to get across the 20 yard line. Maybe a couple of yards there. Not much room there again. West Ham doing a nice job. And that was Armstead on the carry. Trying to find some room to his right. Not much doing though. And it's out across the 20 to the 21 yard line. So now again Third and a tough down and distance for this offense. Especially when you're not throwing the ball very well to this point. This is not where you want to be. Third and seven now. Maysville forced to bring in. They got a four receiver set, two to each side, one running back. Harper fades back. He's got his man on the right side. It's complete, but he is going to be short. Armstead catches the ball on the 25, and he's nice, nice tackle there. He's wrapped up and brought down short of that first down marker. So he did get five yards, but they needed seven there, Plaz. And that's going to bring up fourth down deep in their own territory. And I think at this point of the game, Maysville might be entertaining the thought they're going to go for it or at least try to draw Maybe West draw Ham. them offside, yeah, try to do what West Ham did on their last they, possession. They were successful at that last week. Harper, now, and he's doing that hard count. He's yes. bouncing that head, which that sometimes you can get a call on yourself there for a little motion if you're the quarterback. And they're going to call a timeout here as the play clock was run, winding down. And I think they're going to change their mind now and pump the football. I, I think that's a good move, Dave, because uh, the last thing you need to do right now is turn right around and give the ball right back to West Musking with this kind of field position. Exactly. And, you know, it's been tough for them to move the football anyway. And, you know, fourth, I know it's fourth and short, but at the same time, they've had trouble. And this, <laughs> you do not want to give West Ham another opportunity. And West Ham really hasn't driven the football. They've actually, they're, they're ahead Just because of two big plays. Two big plays. But again, West Ham, any time that number three gets the football, there's a big play waiting he to happen. He has that ability. It's, he's something else. He's electric. I tell you that. And, you know, I saw him run in track last year, and he was just a super impressive physical specimen when you saw him. And, man, he really, really, with football pads on, oh my God. he's a handle. Yeah, they list him, I think, at six foot 190. Good-looking kid. And they're going to try to go for it. And yeah. really, they've got a power formation in there. And he's going to try to pick his way to his right, and he is oh, going to be brought down in the backfield. 
Nice play there from West Ham. Cisse leading the defense there, and I don't really agree with that decision, especially, uh, I mean, that was, you got to go forward. And he tried to pick his way to his right, and he just wasn't able to get anywhere. And they're going to turn it over on downs. Boy, I tell you what, West Ham's in a position right now. They can really put a, a, a dagger in the hearts of the Panthers if they were able to score here quickly They are again. setting up on the 24-yard line here of Maysville, and I would be hard-pressed not to find a way to get the ball to Rashid Cisse here again. <laughs> of course, everybody in the, in the stadium, that's who they're looking. Well, they're going to line up in that and he's wildcat in the wildcat formation. Again. Cisse, snap back. He fakes the handoff. The left, he's going to throw it. He's got a man across the middle, and it's complete to Anton, the quarterback. They switched roles right there, Plaz. <laughs> nice route and catch there by Anton. Cisse gets it up in the air to him, and Anton, nice athlete, goes up and grabs it, and that's a WB Green Insurance first down for West Muskingum Tornadoes. Now first and goal from the five, and boy, Cisse, you know, we didn't know he was going to throw the football, too. I mean, running, catching, he's doing it all tonight. And he and actually threw a pretty nice pass right there, put it right on the numbers. He did put it right on the numbers, and this time Cisse is in the backfield. They're going to snap it right to him again. He's got it. He picks his way to his right, cuts back to his left. He gets across the goal line. Touchdown, Tornadoes. Rashid Cisse with a five-yard touchdown run, and that's going to bring the lead up to 20 to nothing here. And Cisse did a lot right there in that little drive. He threw it one time, and then a nice little run there from the five-yard line. I tell you what line. really impresses me too, Dave, about him. He is so patient as a runner. He just allows things to happen in front of him, and then when he gets that little seam, he has such uh, quickness. Kuhn back in here from, from Kuhn, and the kick is up, and it is good. And that's going to make the score 21 to nothing here with 8.27 to play in the second quarter. We'll take a quick break. You're watching and listening to High School Football on ABC Sports. Now located at 16050 McConnellsville Road in Caldwell, Ohio, Patrons Buckeye Mutual Insurance Company is a mutual insurance company established in 1896 for the purpose of providing insurance coverage to rural Ohio. They offer a product to meet your insurance need, whether it is for a farm, rental dwelling, home in town, secondary or seasonal dwelling, churches, or mobile home. They partner with Grinnell Mutual Insurance Company to offer liability coverage to package with their Patrons Buckeye Mutual Policy. Call today at 638 3 3604 and follow them on Facebook at Patrons Buckeye. Game reset. West M now leads this football game a 21 to nothing over Maysville, courtesy of, well, really converting a nice defensive possession where they got the ball turned over to them on downs and then a nice easy little drive there from the 18 yard line, or excuse me, the 24 yard line. And then King Coon kicks it off and they caught the football and then dropped it. And now it's going to be fumbled, and he fell on it back at the 23-yard line. So Maysville struggling to get anything going on the return game at all here, Plaz, and that's going to put them deep in their own territory again. Well, we talked how important that last drive was for them. This one I think is even more so. Cisse now, three touchdowns on the night. He had 15 coming into this game after five weeks. Now he's got 18, so he's still averaging right now three a game, and we still got another half of football to play here, Plaz. And what's amazing, he really hasn't touched the ball that many times. <laughs> he has not. Harper back under center here for the Panthers. 8.20 to go until halftime. Harper hands it off to Hurdle. Hurdle across that left side again. A little bit of room for him to operate over there. And Hurdle did manage to pick up about three or four yards. And they're going to mark that. Got to see where he's going to finally be marked down. They were at the 24-yard line. It looks like it's at the 27-yard line, so a pickup of three there for Hurdle. Hurdle now has been, has been the only really successful offensive threat that they've had been running to that left side here so far in the football game. Harper trying to lead his team to a touchdown to keep West M from running away and hiding in this football game. And there's a little a reverse. double reverse in the backfield there. And you see that some of those times, you see that out of those wing T teams. And eventually a ball, after a couple of handoffs in the backfield, that was Armstead that got it all the way out, almost picked up the first down. It's out to the 32-yard line. 
And now this is more of a third and manageable for this. This is what the, man, the Panthers would like to exactly. have. Exactly. This is what this offense is designed for, this type of a third down situation. All right, so this time Harper under center, wing T formation, got one in the backfield, one receiver. Puts arm set in motion again. Hands it back there to Saxon. Saxon's going to dive across the 35 to the 36-yard line. And that's going to be a first down, a WB Green Insurance first down for the Maysville Panthers. And that's desperately needed here for the Panthers. Yes, it was, if nothing else, to keep the defense off the field here for a little while. First down now at the 36-yard line. Clock stopped briefly here, 6.51 to play until halftime. Maysville trailing this football game 21 to nothing. Harper under center, Saxon in the backfield with him. Hurdle and got Armstead back there in the backfield too. He throws it to the right. This time he makes a connection with the bolt out on about the 40-yard line. I think they're going to mark it at the 39, so a short pickup. But there's a successful pass, one of the few that Maysville's been able to pick to off tonight. I've got Harper right now three for nine for 14 yards and an interception. And that was a short gain there of three yards. Dave, the other thing is they don't want to turn the ball right back over because on top of things, West Muskingum gets the football to start the second half. And that's that's one of those, you'd like to pull that score before the end of the half and then score the first possession again. Hands it off to Saxon. He's brought down in the backfield. That's going to be a loss. All the way back to the 30. Going to be at the 39-yard line, I believe. That was a defensive end, number eight. That's Keegan Carnes with the big play. They gave him line of scrimmage there, so zero gain. Going to be third down now and seven. Nice play there again. West M in the backfield. That had to be either just a great individual effort from the defensive line or a blown assignment there because he was in the backfield as about as soon as Saxon had the football. This time, Harper in the shotgun, drops straight back. He under pressure, he throws it deep down the middle of the field and it's gonna get picked off. Nope, didn't get picked off. The defensive back had a better chance at catching that ball than the receiver did. Receiver came up and played defender there, Plas, to knock that thing away. I was trying to make out who the uh, defender was. Well, they don't believe in lights here in the press box. Well, they did turn on some lights, so we do have a little bit they're of light now. They're pretty dim, though. They're pretty dim. They, it was that getting, are just my old eyes that uh, is having a hard time It was getting dark, here. and I'm looking at these other broadcast teams. We are the oldest duo up here tonight, <laughs> Plaz. So uh, we're, the, we're the ones that need some light up here. Armstead going to kick it off that rugby kick. It's a low liner, and it's going to hit at the 35 and roll all the way down inside the 20, all the way down to the 11-yard line. That punt, we have our doubts, Plaz, but that time it was successful. It sure was. That's about a 49-yard punt there by Harper. All the way down to the 11. I'm sorry, Armstrad with the, yeah, with Armstrad the punt. Yeah, with the punt, but it hit, and boy, that was that was one when you hit the driver, Plaz, you'd like for to get that run, and he got it that you time. You want to hit that when the fairways are hard. <laughs> 5.13 to play here until halftime. West M with the football, and they don't take very long to score when they do have it, so this is plenty of time for them, especially when you got the home run hitter back there, Rashid Cisse. Cisse this time going to take a spot as a receiver. Anton in the shotgun. Cisse in motion. Fakes it to Cisse, hands it straight ahead this time. This time the thunder there in, the, in that offensive set there. Carter Winland, and he picks his way forward for a couple there, and that's going to bring up a second down and eight. Good play made there by the outside linebacker, Caleb Monlox. Just wasn't much room there for Winland as he was trying to pick his way forward. And again, all eyes on Cisse, and every time, you know, they fake the ball to him, you know, they think he's going to get it. <laughs> And if you lose a step, he's going to beat you. Yeah, good night. Cisse this time out in the right slot as a receiver. Three receivers now to the right for Anton. Anton going to hold it off. To, no, he keeps it himself. He picks his way forward across the 20, out to the 25. He's going to get that first down plus. Anton, nice ball fake there. Looked like he was going to hand it to Winland, but then used Winland as a blocker and got it all the way across the 25 to the 27-yard line. Pick up a 14 there and a first down, a WB Green Insurance first down for the West M Tornadoes. 4.15 to play until halftime, and the clock is moving. 
and they still have, I believe, they've got two timeouts left, so you can stop the clock on first downs, and they've got a couple of timeouts. Plenty of time here for the Tornadoes. Anton fakes it to Winland. Now throws it out on the flat, and he's got his man. Makes that catch and gets across the 35-yard line. And that time, that was not Cisse. That was number 13 that time. And that was Taven Bennett. He made the catch there and got up across the 35-yard line. Going to mark it at the 36, so second and short here. Clock moving, 3.30 to play until halftime. This time, two receivers to the left. Anton in the shotgun. Snaps back. He's going to fake that handoff. He's throwing the ball deep. He's got his man Cissé out there again. He runs under catches at the 30. 25, 20, 15, oh 5. Goodness. Touchdown, Tornadoes. The electric Rashid Cissé strikes again. Again, he got one-on-one -on -one coverage out here, and Anton was able to bide enough time until Cissé got behind the defender. A 64-yard touchdown strike from Anton to Rashid Cissé. And again, Cissé has no match A out there on the field A. <laughs> not, not at all. <laughs> man, oh man. He got single coverage, and he just ran right past him. And Anton, smart enough to throw it out there and let his man run underneath it. And that extra point is going to make be good, and it's going to be 28 to nothing now. 3-11 to play until halftime. West M, 28, Maysville, nothing. We'll take a quick break. You're watching and listening to High School Football on ABC Sports. If you're looking for top-notch farm equipment service, repair, and sales, Ross Agri Mechanics is your go-to place. They're a local independent shop that offers Land Pride, Gravely, Arians, Farm King, Koiker, and more. Whether you need new equipment or repairs, they've got you covered. Check out their website at rossagri.com. That's R-O-S-S-A-G-R-I.com for more information. And good luck to all the local high school football teams. Dave Hilliard back here at Maysville. Again, Cissé on the prowl here in the Panthers' pit as he scores yet another touchdown. He brings that lead now to 28 to nothing in favor of the West Ham Tornadoes. And there's that Valentine Insurance kickoff once again, this time going to be corralled down at the 15-yard line. Picks ahead to the left side across the 20 and is slung down right inside the 25-yard line at about the 23-yard line. I believe that was Hurdle on the return that time. And now, here we are, three minutes to go. And as you pointed out, Plaz, West Ham gets the ball to start the second half. And that's not good news for the Maysville Panthers. It has been the Rashid Cissé show tonight. Man, he is as advertised. I mean, even better than advertised. He's better yeah. than advertised. I didn't get to see this team play last year, and he is putting on a show tonight. First and 10 now for the Maysville Panthers at their own 23-yard line. Harper going to roll to his right. He throws it out into the flat, and it's caught by Hurdle. Hurdle gets to about the 30-yard line before he's thrown down. Nice pickup on first down, and that's going to bring up second and three here. Clock moving, 2.53 to play until halftime. Maysville now trying to pick up the tempo a little bit here, Plaz. They're trying to get something done here before the half. Harper, this time hands it off to Saxon. Saxon tries to burrow ahead, but he gets nothing. Might have picked up a yard, and that's still going to bring up a third down and about two for the Maysville Panthers. Quickly to the line of scrimmage again. Harper under center. This time it's going to be Harper, and he is hit, and there is a flag in the air. And Plaza, is that the first flag of the football game? Yes, it is. Absolutely. It comes with 2.23 to go in the second quarter. And I believe Harper got a little bit anxious, yes. And that's a legal procedure penalty, and that's going to push the Panthers back five yards. So what was a third and manageable turns into a third and about six yards. And Maysville desperately needing to convert here. 2.23 to play until halftime. Harper now in the shotgun, three receivers to his left, one to his right. And he's going to roll to his left, trying to throw it right-handed, and he leads his man, and it's caught at about the 31-yard line. 
and that is going to be short of the first down. That was Wesley Armstead on the catch. A nice play there from Armstead. Great catch. But it's going to bring up fourth down, and there's still two minutes to play. And if they don't get this one, and they turn it over to West Ham, West Ham could stick it in the end zone again and then get the ball to start the second half. And we could have a running clock. And we quickly. could have a running clock very quickly. Three receivers to the right. Harper. Snap right off his face mask and it's falling and it's going to be oh fumbled in the backfield. The snap went right off his face mask. He never did get a hold of it. West Ham going to take over on their Panthers 20. They're going to mark it at the 27 yard line. I don't know if he wasn't ready for the snap or it just came back too fast, but it hit him right in the face max mask and bounced forward. Yeah, yeah there was a, some miscommunication there somewhere. I don't know whose fault that was. West Ham now in business. 137 to play until halftime. They've still got two timeouts, and at the rate that they score, this is plenty of time for the tornado. You think Cissé will touch it on his possession? <laughs> Anton in the shotgun. He fakes it to Cissé, and he's going to keep it himself. He gets across the 30, and a shoestring tackle brings him down at the 20-yard line, or Anton would have taken that one to the house. And there's Cissé as a decoy that time, and Anton did a nice job, and he gets the ball out the way down inside the 20, down to the 19, a yard short of that first down, closer to the 20 here. Clock moving, a minute 16 to play. West Ham facing second and short. Anton in the shotgun. Puts his man in motion, looking to throw it. He's got a man across the middle of the field, and it's caught and dropped. Dropped in the end zone. Boy, that was a nice throw from Anton right on the money. And that was Houston, I believe, that he was trying to get on that pass play. Boy, what a nice throw there. Just couldn't quite get it in, and it was Houston. And that's going to be second, excuse me, now third down and short. Still at about the 20-yard line here for the Tornadoes. Nice throw, just didn't get the connection. Cade Rock with pretty good defensive play there, too, for the Maysville Panthers. He did put some pressure on him and didn't let him catch it there. Anton in that shotgun. He's going to hand it off. First down and more down across the 15, 10, 5, into the end zone. Touchdown. This time, Carter Winland gets in on the action. A 20-yard touchdown run, and that's going to make our score 34 to nothing in favor of the West M Tornadoes awaiting that point after touchdown and we're going to start the second half with a running clock that that's just amazing because i tell you we had such a close defensive battle for the entire first quarter yeah and then <laughs> man the floodgates have opened up here 54 seconds to play until half coon snap down kick is up Right down Broadway, that kick is good. That's going to make our score 35 West M. Maysville, nothing. We'll take a quick break. You're watching and listening to High School Football on ABC Sports. If you're looking for top-notch farm equipment service, repair, and sales, Ross Agri Mechanics is your go-to place. They're a local independent shop that offers Land Pride, Gravely, Arians, Farm King, Koiker, and more. Whether you need new equipment or repairs, they've got you covered. Check out their website at rossagri.com. That's R-O-S-S-A-G-R-I.com for more information. And good luck to all the local high school football teams. Dave Hilliard and my man Plaz here at Maysville High School. West M just continues to pile it on here in the second quarter. That's their fourth touchdown of the second quarter, Plaz, and they have taken command of this football game. It's 35 to nothing. You know, when you have such a weapon like they do in CSA, it just makes everything else so much easier because the defense is completely focused on CSA for a reason. Yes. But that opens up other facets. Coons kick is taken in at about the 15-yard line, handled across the 20, 25, 30, 40 out to the 45 yard line. So finally a bright spot here for Maysville as the kick return, they get it out almost to midfield. And it's gonna be marked at the 44 yard line. Nice return there by Landon Iden, the uh, 140 pound sophomore. Iden gets it out to the 44 yard line on a nice kick return there. Took that in around right about the 20 yard line. Maysville 44 yard line now, it's first and 10, but they've only got 47 seconds left. And again, as we've said, a team that runs the wing tee, this is, this is a tough situation for them. This is not where they, they want to be. They've only had three first downs here in the first half. 
And I will throw in that they do have a weapon there. The quarterback is a great kicker, and they run a screen, and it's almost intercepted oh on that my. first play. They tried to run a screen play, and I think that's a great call, but Harper threw it right to the defensive lineman, and it was almost intercepted, so that's going to bring up second down now for the Panthers. And that was the only West End defender really within you know reach of the ball. <laughs> They complete that. That would have been a nice game, but like you said, good call, just uh, not executed very, very well. Second down and 10. Around 44-yard line. There's 39 seconds to play until halftime. The good news for the Panthers, that only took five seconds. They're desperately trying to get on the board here before halftime. They trailed this 35 to nothing. Swung out in the flat to Armstead. Armstead makes a man miss, gets it across the 50-yard line, and he's finally run out of bounds at the 46-yard line of West M. Nice play there by Armstead, making extra yardage there. And it looks like he's got enough for the first down, and he does. And that's a WB Green Insurance first down for the Maysville Panthers. And he was able to get out of bounds, which yep. would stop the clock. He got out of bounds. Very good point there. 41, or the 46-yard line, excuse me. 31 seconds to play until halftime. Maysville trying to get on the board. He's going to throw it again. He's back, and it's down deep to the sideline, and it's intercepted this time. And I think that's Anton back there. Anton. The quarterback makes the interception all the way back on the 17-yard line. And just when Maysville thought they might have had a shot at getting something going before halftime, because they do have Harper as a weapon, as a kicker. I thought they could have got a field goal range maybe at least, but they throw the interception, and now West Ham going to take over. 24 seconds. Now, I wouldn't put it past them. To score again, the way it's been going here in this second quarter. With an athlete like Cisse, you always have that ability to strike from any point on the field. They're going to start on their own 19-yard line, and they're taking what I would call the victory formation. The victory formation, exactly. Anton going to take the snap and take a knee, I believe, and get out of dodge and get into the locker room. Maysville trailing this game to West Muskingum, 35 to nothing at the halftime. It's been the Rashid Cisse show. That's Say that a, quickly. That's a tough, that's a tongue twister, but that's, but when, that's what's happened here in this football game. West Ham leading 35 to nothing at the half. You're watching and listening to High School Football on ABC Sports. High School Football from ABC Sports and WYLE Cambridge. 107.9 Cambridge, 98.5 Zanesville, Nash, Icon. From the Ohio News Network, this is the Ohio Education Association Tonight in High School Football. Named best sports program in the country by the National Association of State Radio Networks. Tonight in High School Football is presented by Bex Hybrids. Now here's your host, Skip Mossick. And hi again everyone, welcome to Tonight in High School Football's Halftime Report. This evening we'll talk a little officiating with Bo Rugg, who heads that up for the OHSAA. We'll chat with Bo next on the Ohio News Network. I'm Ohio Education Association President Scott DeMauro, and on behalf of the OEA's 120,000 members, we're proud to bring you tonight's game. Our members are the public school educators who coach your kids on and off the field because we believe in the potential of every student and their right to a high-quality public education, no exceptions. That's why we will continue to speak in one voice to demand the supports and resources our public schools need because public education matters. Every farmer has their reason for why they do what they do. For Beck's, it's faith, family, and farming. Since 1937, the Beck family and family of employees have been committed to honoring God and helping farmers succeed. Farming is full of extremes, and we face the challenges with hard work and steadfast determination, delivering quality line of products backed by legendary customer service. We look forward to standing by your side, supporting you as you live out the life you were meant to live. Bex, when it comes to farming, we believe in something more. This is tonight in high school football on the Ohio News Network. Once again, here's Skip Mossick. We are presented by Bex Hybrids. At Bex, they are and will remain farmers at heart. And welcome back, everyone. Halftime of your game. We're joined for a few minutes this evening by Bo Rugg, Director of Officiating and Sports Management with the OHSAA. And, Bo, we know there's been a concerted effort the last couple of years for outreach to recruit new officials. Have those efforts been effective? And I guess 
guess in what areas have you had the most success? Well, they have been effective. We've had the most success really on getting people interested. Uh, you know, since we went online training, we've got, oh gosh, uh, last year we had over 4,000 apps out there. And, and as far as uh, new officials, probably about 700 across all sports. Um, I think what our issue is now that our challenge and we're working through it is to get more clinic type based things to get them some experience before they actually go out on the field court. Um, that's that's what we're working on and, and uh, so far so good. We've had an uptick this year and we're looking to uh, continue that trend. Bo, I know many times football officials are former players who want to stay involved with the sport. Do you encourage this? I guess even planting a seed while they're still in school. Absolutely, yeah. we got about 50-some schools that are um, teaching some um, officiating uh, classes uh, as part of curricula, and that really helps us. Uh, we like to plant a seed. You know, um, 96 point something of our athletes aren't going to play at the next level, and then you go to the next level, and that it's another 98% of those aren't going to play at the following level. So uh, we'd like to keep them involved in the game and then and, and serving others by being an official. You know, Bo, we've asked you about this in the past, but we get the question all the time. In football, are there typically crews, or do you assign individuals from game to game? Well, regular season is almost all crews. 99% um, <clears throat> is crews. Uh, what we do in playoffs, uh, weeks 11 and 12, we do crews from around the state. And then uh, um, I make up 56 crews for the following weeks. Uh, obviously, we have 56 games on week 13, 28 on week 14, uh, 14 on 15, and 7 in the finals. And those crews are made up. And so those people working finals uh, that are made up from different uh, individual people will have worked um, four games together, and that's a good thing. One of the things we try to do, especially when we're making up those crews, is even though we're, we're making up from individuals, we're going to have some people that are on the same crew together, and they're at the same level, so we'll keep them together. So I've probably got, I don't know, 60% of those crews that I make up have at least one other or two other people that work together all the time. So uh, we'll try to group people together if we can. Uh, and we definitely keep them, um, for the most part, uh, from the same uh, area of the state. You know, Bo, last thing. If people are interested in becoming an official, there are details on the OHSAA webpage. But I guess how long of a process is it to go through the class and the certification process? And are there different levels, I guess, of certification to become a referee versus, say, a line judge, back judge, et cetera? That's a great question. No, there aren't. Um, you just become an official in football, and then you you end up when you work lower level games, you probably work in a lot of different positions and uh, through a season, and that's where you really learn and and kind of get what you want. The process takes you know it's it's individual since you're taking it online, um, you can do it in a you know two day period or you can take a month. Um, you're just going to watch the modules and go through it and 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 then get through that and. What happens a lot of times is people just get really interested and do it faster because they just, you know, it's like uh, like eating candy. You know, you just keep eating. <laughs> well, it is halftime. I guess you just made everybody hungry. Bo Rugg, Director of Officiating and Sports Management with the Ohio High School Athletic Association. Bo, we always appreciate your time. Thank you. Anytime, Skip. Take care. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and we'll be back to wrap up this week's Ohio Education Association tonight in high school football a halftime report presented by Bex Hybrids next on the Ohio News Network. Bex recognizes this week's player with heart, Kobe Four from Paulding High School for his commitment and passion on the field and within the farming community. I just like how it takes a whole group to do it. You can't just do it on your own. And when you do it and you build tight bonds with everyone on that field. Kobe loves football and his teammates, but he's also involved in Habitat for Humanity and crushing cans for cancer. But one of his favorite activities is doing service projects for FFA. We had to go around the uh, town square and take down different posts and stuff like that. And they just need touched up a little bit to make them easier to change all the different banners and everything we hang on them. And through it all, he's developed a passion for farming. It means basically everything. If you think about it, everywhere you look, 
agriculture somehow has their part in things, the farming, the livestock, soils. At Bex, we are in will remain farmers at heart. This, this is ONN. Our thanks once again to Bo Rugg, Director of Officiating and Sports Management with the Ohio High School Athletic Association for joining us this evening. If you have any questions and want more information about becoming an Ohio High School official, simply visit their website at ohsaa.org. Enjoy the second half of your ball game. I'm Skip Mossick on the Ohio News Network. This has been the Ohio Education Association tonight in high school football presented by Bex hybrids a reminder you can listen to many of our affiliate broadcasts from across the state at onnradio.com from the ohio news network dave hilliard back here at maysville high school halftime west muskingum running rough shot over the panthers here 35 to nothing got my partner with me my man plaz tonight and we have seen the Rashid Cisse show here in this first half. And the first couple of times he touched the ball, they did a good job. They kind of bottled him up, but you know, it's, it isn't like it let it bother him. He's been really patient the entire night long. And then when he gets single coverage, it's over with. Oh, when you put him out in space, he's <laughs> something else. Uh, they got exactly what they were looking for in that first touchdown pass, one-on-one -on -one and the uh, Anton was able to bide enough time to allow him to get behind the defender, which, which didn't take very long. No, which did not and, take and long at all. And his credit, he threw a perfect ball. Uh, Cissé caught it in stride, and it was all over. And, you know, it's, it's, he's made those big plays, but as you point out, Anton has done a nice job. He has thrown the ball out there and let his man run under it. I mean, he's smart enough to know, I got the track guy running out there. I just got to get it up in the air to him. Don't underthrow him, you know, and he's going to go get it. Cissé has actually only carried the ball four times <laughs> and caught two, two, uh, two uh, passes, and he has three touchdowns. Well, our halftime report here brought to you by Laborers Local 530, and we appreciate them and all of our sponsors tonight. All of our sponsors, and I'll give it to you, all of them here in the big list. Patrons Buckeye Mutual Insurance, Laborers Local 530, WB Green Insurance, West 40 Auto Sales, Greg's Motor Sales, Ross Agro Mechanics, uh, Doan Ford, People's Bank, Valentine Insurance, 45 Logistics, and Guernsey Muskingum Electric Corporation. All those fine sponsors of our broadcast tonight. And again, our halftime report brought to you by Laborers Local 530. I'll go through the scoring here. It's 35 to nothing here at half. West M, all the scoring. I won't have to say West M. It's just yeah. them scoring every time. First quarter, 137 to play. A 59-yard pass from Anton to Cisse. Three plays, 62 yards, and it's 7 to nothing with that point after. Second quarter, 11-10 to go in that second quarter. So just at the start of the second quarter, a 62-yard run by Cisse, and that was on a fourth down play. Four plays, 71 yards, 14 to nothing there with the PAT, West Muskingum. 8.27 left until halftime. Cisse with a five-yard run where he did such a nice job again, just being patient. He picked a space, a nice cut back. Two plays, 24 yards, and he also threw a pass on that drive. So 21 to nothing with a point after. In the second quarter again, 3-10 until half, West Muskingum. And this was just so impressive. The 64-yard pass from Anton to Cissé. Cissé got single coverage again. And I don't know how they keep managing to do that, but by golly, he had single coverage. Four-play, 89-yard drive, ending that 64-yard pass to Cissé, and it's 28 to nothing. And then with just under a minute to play, 54 seconds until the half, Winland got in on the party this time, a 20-yard touchdown run. And that Coon PAT, that was a three-play, 28-yard drive. And that makes the score 35 to nothing here in favor of the Tornadoes, which means, Plaz, we're going to start this second half with a running clock. And on top of that, West Ham gets the football, so they have the <laughs> yeah. opportunity to, yes. to put another one on the board right away. West M gets the football here. And if, if you're in the locker room, if you're in Maysville, you're coming off of, of a week where you, you had a nice football game, you did some really good things, you, you imposed your will on the other team. You ran the football, you used your physical superiority over Crooksville, and you came away with a 20 to nothing win against a team that was 3 and 1 going into the game. So now you're in the locker room this week and you're down 35 to nothing at halftime. 
you know, what do you do, Plaz, when you're a coach in that situation? I don't know. You were a coach also. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this is one of those situations that you just you have nightmares about. You know, there's not a whole lot you can do that this game has been dominated, you know, by the tornadoes. Uh, all you can do is challenge your kids to go out and play hard and uh, start building, you know, try, try to win the second half. Exactly. That's and, what I was just getting ready to say. Yeah, win the second half and develop some momentum because they've still got four football games left after this. Right. And, I mean, you, you want to you, – you got to get, get some momentum going. You got to do something. You want to try to string together some first downs or something. Try to get some points on the board here, and that's that's one of those that's you got to have to build on for something for the rest of the season because more than likely you're not going to come back and win this football game. I don't think so. You know, <laughs> Especially with the running a, clock a, here. Yeah, exactly with the running clock to start with, and again with West Ham coming out and getting the football right away. So right away they want to come out, you know, and, and try to shut down the uh, the tornadoes offense. And then try to get something going offensive because their offensive lace has been shut down. I, I had them the first half for only 88 total yards. And the other thing, too, that I've been impressed with was West Ham. It's not like they're just forcing the ball to Cissé constantly. They're picking and choosing their spots. They use him as a decoy, and that's created some space for the running backs and the quarterback to run the football. Um, you know, when he's, when he's been covered, they haven't tried to force it to him a couple times. And he's even thrown the football himself, which was impressive. <laughs> he threw the ball. He made a really nice throw down he to Ant. A, a, a ten-point accuracy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He threw the ball to the quarterback. I yes. mean, he ran a nice nice to post route. Uh, good catch are made by him. Anton's had a really nice first half, too. I mean, we forget that there are some other quality players exactly. on the Tornadoes team. Exactly. And, uh, just, but everything is, is you know, focused around Cissé. And when all the uh, focus goes towards him, that allows other kids to really step up and show what good players they are. And I'm with you. They, they just have to – you've got to sell your kids. We've got to win the second half. We've got to do something to win the second half. Otherwise, it's just going to be – the year could be really go down the toilet on you, so to speak, here unless you can build a little momentum to get ready for that next game. And speaking of, I'm, I've got it here somewhere. I've got to look through my stuff, but they've got, Maysville's got John Glenn here next week, and that's not going to get any easier for them. And then West Ham, they'll be at, they'll play Crooksville next week. We'll take a quick break here in our halftime report from Laborers Local 530. You're watching and listening to High School Football on ABC Sports. Greg Motor Sales, located at 2840 South River Road in Zanesville, would like to wish all the local high school athletes good luck with their upcoming season. At Greg Motor Sales, they sell used cars starting at $39.95 and up and have financing options available. If you're looking for your next affordable and reliable car, give Greg Motor Sales a call at 740-454-7060 or visit their website, gregsmotorsales.net. People's Bank's vision is to be the best community bank in America. People's Bank provides local, hometown relationship-based banking with 132 full-service branches for all of your financial needs. As your community bank, People's Bank strives to make our communities a better place to live, work, and play. We would love a chance to earn your business. People's Bank. Working together. Building success. Member FDIC. Promises. You've heard them all. Peace of mind, quality insurance products, superior claim service, all at a fair and competitive price. Since 1848, Westfield Insurance has promised to provide excellent insurance coverage for your home, auto, and business. Sharing knowledge, building trust. That is Westfield Insurance's pledge to their customers. For a quote on protecting your home, auto, and business, call W.B. Green Insurance today. W.B. Green, professional insurance. What is a cooperative? A cooperative like Guernsey Muskingum Electric is your local rural electric provider. The owners are not investors on Wall Street. They are actual members using the electricity. Decisions are made by local directors who know, listen, and care about their neighbors. A cooperative is not driven by profit or stock prices. Instead, they are driven by providing safe, reliable electricity at a reasonable price. That's the cooperative difference. Guernsey Muskingum Electric, your touchstone energy cooperative. People's Bank's vision is to be the best community bank in America. People's Bank provides local, hometown relationship-based banking with 132 full-service branches for all of your financial needs. As your community bank, 
People's Bank strives to make our communities a better place to live, work, and play. We would love a chance to earn your business. People's Bank, working together, building success. Member FDIC. Dave Hilliard back here at the Maysville Athletic Facility. The Panthers on the short end of a really uh, impressive performance by West Muskingum as the Tornadoes lead this game 35 to nothing at halftime. It's been all West M. A couple of possessions early back and forth. We had a couple, like three punts and an interception right off to start the game. But after that, West M got it going here offensively. Well, once that, they got that uh, threw the ball over top and hit uh, Cissé deep on that first touchdown pass. It's been all tornadoes ever since then. Like you said, really, the, uh, the tornadoes started out their first two or three possessions. Had great field position, couldn't do anything with it. Exactly. The Panthers did a nice job shutting it down. But, boy, ever since that first score, it's just been... Uh, been a lights out for the uh, a very good a very good West Muskingum team. Yes, they are. Um, Got to give uh, all the people here at Maysville such a, a, a hand here. They've treated us so well tonight. We got a packed house in the press box. Uh, no less than three broadcasting duos in this press box tonight, and they still have. I mean, this is a good sized press box. First time I've been up here. I mean, plenty of room still. And let's factor in this too, Plaz. They got pizza. I, I love press boxes with pizza. <laughs> you, you can't get any better than that, Dave. Press boxes with pizza and air conditioning. Oh, this is great. Plenty of drinks. They have treated us very well tonight. We really appreciate that because I've been on the, the bad end of a couple bar, bad uh, broadcasting spots here this week, in, in this season of football, I should say. So really appreciate the folks here at Maysville. They've done a great job. It's their homecoming tonight. Their band, is that they brought in a bunch of their alumni to play in their band What a great tonight. show they're putting on out here, and they're, they're having fun. It is a fantastic show. It's impressive that the numbers that they've got in their band to begin with. Plus, they brought back some alumni. They were announcing them here. So there's cheerleaders. There's people in the band. It's really great to see everybody getting involved in their homecoming. And, boy, it just seems like everywhere there's a homecoming. I live over in New Concord homecoming at John Glenn tonight as well. And I saw, Plaz, you were madly writing down some scores, so share with us, my man, some scores here. Getting back to that the John Glenn Meadowbrook game, the uh, John Glenn Little Muskies right now enjoying Hollywood or uh, homecoming festivities, leading the Colts 35 to nothing at the half. Wow. Other MVL scores, the Philo Electrics are on top of the Crooksville Ceramics, 18 to zero. Uh, Sheridan, no surprise, 42-0 over Riverview at the half. Uh, a close one tonight at, in New Lex. The uh, Panthers lead the Coshocton Redskins 6-0. And Tri-Valley, kind of in a surprise, a close game with Morgan tonight, only leading 35-20 to at the half. You know, if, if my memory serves me correct, Morgan played them a really, really good football game last year. Morgan's program is getting better. No, yep. I remember that was, a, that was a game that could have gone either way late in that game last year, if I remember correctly, and, and they were able to pull that one out. So. Playing them tough again tonight. A couple other local scores. The Caldwell Redskins, who came in tonight 5-0, and are leading Connaughton Valley 48-0 at the half. Cambridge Bobcats trail East Liverpool 33-13, and the Barnesville Shamrocks, one of the best teams in the area, lead Shadyside 47 to nothing at Ooh. halftime. And the Cambridge... It's going to be a tough road to hoe here for Cambridge. I mean, they graduated 17 seniors. It's been a tough, it's been tough for them so far. So, and we're setting up a, a huge game next week down at the fairgrounds in Noble County. The undefeated Caldwell Redskins will be hosting the undefeated Barnesville Shamrock. That's that's the Noble County Super Bowl, isn't it? No, one Noble, one uh, Guernsey oh, okay, County. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the, the Noble County Super Bowl will happen week 10 with the uh, Shenandoah. Okay, I, that's right. Yes, I, yes. My, my eastern Ohio geography is still you're off. Getting, just you're, that's bit. right. I've only lived here for four years. My, my geography is still not quite that good here. So I'll figure it out eventually, although I do know that Barnesville is pretty good. Man, somebody's got a little situation up here in this press box. Uh, there we go. Thankfully, somebody picked up their headset. All right. Um, we will come back here. Our halftime show will continue. It's the Laborers Local 530 show. We'll take one more quick break here in the halftime, and then we'll come back. We'll talk a little bit more, and then the second half will get rolling here. You're listening and watching high school football on ABC Sports.
Hey, football fans, laborers, Local 530 in Zanesville, Ohio, is cheering on all the local high school teams this year. Serving Muskingum, Perry, Noble, and Guernsey counties, Local 530 represents around 400 skilled men and women in the building and construction trades. They work with over 100 signatory contractors, providing committed and experienced laborers for building, heavy highway, and pipeline construction. For more information, give them a call at 740-453-1214. Good luck to all the teams from Laborers Local 530. I'm not buying till I check down for most of us are faced with uncertainty every day. Your job, your finances, sporting events, schooling for your children, and so much more. With so much uncertainty surrounding you, there's one auto dealership that you can be certain about, and that's Doan Ford. You can be certain that you'll always get a great deal and the best service afterwards. In business for nearly 60 years has given Doan Ford the reputation of being a strong, reliable dealership. Be certain. Choose Doan Ford online at DoanFord.com. Calling all truck drivers. If you're looking for a chance, 45 Logistics in Zanesville wants you to join their team. 45 Logistics is a family-owned regional trucking company in Zanesville. Enjoy being home every weekend with no team runs and no hazmat endorsement required. Earn 54 cents per mile, plus health benefits, paid vacation, and safety bonuses. For more information, call 740-647-1430 or online at 45dli.com. Everyone at 45 Logistics wants to wish the local teams good luck this football season. Dave Hilliard and Plaz back here at Maysville halftime. The Tornadoes of West Muskingum lead this football game 35 to nothing over the Maysville Panthers. We had a great halftime show here from the Maysville folks, their band and cheerleaders and alumni cheerleaders and band. A great show from them. Also the West Ham Tornadoes, their band performed. Nice halftime here tonight. And it's a perfect weather night for football here anyway. I mean, the temperature was around 75 degrees when we kicked off. So, I mean, it's pretty nice out here. And it's a beautiful facility, a great setting here for high school football. We've got a half moon staring at us tonight here in the press box, too. So It's just beautiful. It, uh, you know, a lot of people showed up tonight for homecoming for the Panthers. Uh, and, and they are having a good time regardless of what the score is right now. Well, we were it's here. It's still just a game. Yeah, we were here more uh, an hour and 15 minutes before game time. And the stands were basically half full at that time. So an early arriving crowd here for all the homecoming festivities. So give you know, props to all the folks here in Southtown that showed up tonight for homecoming. Pretty big deal here. And it's a pretty big deal for every school that are homecoming. You know, it's one of those celebrations of your alumni. And it's, it's just a great, you know, it's usually a great time. At least the kids get into it. I mean, my granddaughter, she's a kindergartner, and they had them doing Spirit Week this week, That's so awesome. she got to experience it. So They may be rethinking right now, uh, rescheduling or scheduling uh, West Muskingum <laughs> as the opponent for homecoming. Yeah, maybe not the greatest idea in the world there. Maysville getting set to kick this ball off. John Valentine Insurance kickoff, and they've got... Matthew Harper, and we haven't got to see him kick yet, Plaz. But I was just I just watched him there at halftime. He came out and he was booming him from 40 yards with no problem. He can really kick it. Now I don't know if this is one where you try to get do an onside kick. Uh, they tried it last week at Crooksville and he kicked it out of bounds. Well, I know you either want to kick it out of the end zone. You don't want to kick it to the five yard line because that's where Mr. C say lines up at. Well, Harper is going to put his foot into it here for the second half kickoff, and it's a John Valentine Insurance kickoff, and he puts his foot into it, and it's going to get into the end zone. It hits at the five-yard line. It bounces into the end zone, and again, he is a great weapon to have. I watched him attempt a 52-yard field goal last week, and I was just amazed it was a high school football game, and they were trying a 52-yarder, but... Um, obviously, he's got the foot for it. So you know, so many teams get those soccer players, and they have good soccer programs, and they find somebody in the soccer program to be their kicker. This young man is a football player yeah. and a kicker. Well, exactly. I mean, John Glenn has a soccer player, Will Nicolazakis. He's their kicker. So I mean, and, it, and sometimes it's it's easy just to go grab one. Somebody's got a good foot. Hey, yes, and we can teach you how to kick that football. All right, West Muskingum on the offense, leading this game, thirty-five to nothing. And Anton running the show. And you wonder how long you're going to leave some of your starters in there. He's going to throw it on first down to his right. And he was trying to throw it in a nice little pattern there. And right up that slot on the right side. And he was trying to get the ball to number zero there. That was Connor Hill. But he was going to be held a little bit there. A little bit of pass interference. And the flag came flying in. So I think the, the defender was Wesley Armstead. Pretty good coverage. You just got there a little bit early. Might have just reached a little soon or got there just a touch early. 
and we were very much uh, not penalty, we were just almost penalty free in that first half, but not a good sign when you start off the second half with a penalty on the first play. But that's gonna give the Tornadoes a WB Green Insurance first down out at the 35 yard line now. And as advertised, that clock moving now, we're already down to 10 minutes to play in the third quarter. West Muskingum in control of this one. Anton, snap back, he's gonna hand it off and that's gonna be Winland. Winland bowls ahead across the 40, 45 out to the 47 yard line. Nice first down run from Carter Winland as he picks up another first down all the way out to the 48 yard line, a 13 yard pickup for Carter Winland. Pretty big gap in the, uh, in the defensive front there of Maysville. Maysville gonna make a little change there on defense on the front line there, bringing in number 59 there on defense. DeAndre Mercer. DeAndre Mercer, they brought in then. They made a substitution, didn't like what happened right up the middle in that first play. Anton with the snap, fakes it to Winland. Now fades back and he's under pressure. He scrambles to his left and he's gonna be brought down for a loss back at the 45 yard line. Nice play there. And that was Hurdle on the tackle from his linebacker position. Anton was trying to throw the football got flushed out of the pocket and ended up having to take about a three yard loss back to the 45 yard line. Second down now and 13 for the Tornadoes. 8.43 to play in this third quarter. You gotta know where Cisse is in this and he's in the slot on the left side. This is where they like to bring him in motion and there he comes and it's gonna be that jet sweep to Cisse. He cuts back to his left, across the 45, 50. Spun down inside Maysville territory at about the 46 yard line. That's a nine yard pickup for Rashid Cisse. About an eight yard pickup. They're gonna mark it at the 47. But again, Cisse very patient. He got that ball back there and he was just looking for the right space to cut back and he did and he picked up a nice Well, he game. just glides. I mean, your true <laughs> athletes just make it look so effortless and he's one of those type of people. Third down now for the Tornadoes. Eight minutes to play in the third quarter. Anton in the shotgun. Snap back, fakes the handoff and he's gonna throw it out to the right flat and he's got his man at the 40 yard line. And he's finally, they got him either out of bounds or just stopped his forward progress. And I believe that was Connor Hill again. And that gets it down to the 39 yard line. And that is a WB Green Insurance first down for the West M Tornadoes. In Maysville territory on the 39 yard line. Clock moving seven and a half minutes to play. And boy, that running clock, it moves quickly. Makes a difference, it sure does. <laughs> it makes a difference in these football games. Anton in the shotgun. Snap back, he hands it up, fakes the handoff, now rolls to his left. He's trying to throw it across his body, he's got his man and it's caught. Nope, it's gonna be out of bounds. He kind of juggled it a little bit and the official following the play here down the sideline immediately called that incomplete, so an incomplete pass. Hill could have made a tough catch, but couldn't quite handle it and get his feet in bounds. He's out of bounds, second and 10 now. Seventh play of the drive coming up here for the Tornadoes to start this second half. It almost looked like from here he had control of it when he crossed out of bounds, but officials got a little better look at it than what we did, he's, said it was still bobbling it. He's looking right down that line and we're up here 40 yards away in the yeah. press box. Good, play, good throw made that time by Anton because again, rolling to his left, got his shoulder squared. Cisse in motion. Anton makes a man miss in the backfield, gets across the 35 down to the 33 yard line. Nice run there, something out of nothing there from Anton. And he's gonna be marked down at the 33 yard line. That's a six yard pickup. And that's gonna bring up a third and about four here for the Tornadoes. Nice pick up there by Anton after it looked like he was gonna be sacked. Six minutes to play now in the third quarter. So halfway through this third quarter. And that hasn't taken long, has it? Hasn't it's taken about six minutes. It's taken about six minutes, exactly, as that clock moves here. Anton in the shotgun. He's got Carter Winland back there behind him. Snap back, hands it to Winland. Winland bowls ahead. He puts his head down. Pile goes forward and it gets to about the 30 yard line, but that's gonna be just a little bit short of that first down marker. And that's gonna bring up fourth down now and a long one for the Tornadoes. And obviously this is a situation where they're going to go for it. 
Maysville trying to bring in some extra help on the defensive line. Colton Dumont comes into the football game. They're going to line up in the Wildcat formation here with Cissé receiving the snap in center. Yep, Cissé going to try to get that first down for him here on fourth down. Snap back to him. He looks to his right. Cuts back inside across the 30 down to the 29, 28-yard line. And that's going to be a West M first down, a WB Green Insurance first down for the West M Tornadoes. And when you got somebody like that back there, you just hand it to him. <laughs> snap it right just to him. Just snap it to him. Just and snap it don't right even, to him. Don't even risk a handoff. 28-yard line now, West M first down, 4.44 to go. Cissé going to stay back there as that Wildcat quarterback. Snap back to him. He's going to go to his right again. Dodges a man in the backfield. Stiff arm. Cross the 30. 25. 20. Down to the 15. He gets loose again. He's carrying people and he gets loose all the way down to the five yard line. Rashid Cissé shows the power to go along with that speed. You know, as many big plays as he made tonight, I think that's the most impressive because he dragged about four <laughs> defenders with him the last 12 yards of that carry. Yes, he did. I thought he was down a couple of times, but he kept the feet churning and kept moving. He got it all the way down to the five-yard line. That's a WB Green Insurance first and goal for the Tornadoes on a 23-yard pickup from Rashid Cisse, and he's going to stay in the backfield, and he might just get this one in the end zone. Direct snap, high snap. He fakes it. Picks it up straight ahead, gets down to the one-yard line, reaches forward, but doesn't get to the goal line. Almost got it down to the one-yard line, and that would have been Cissé's fifth touchdown of the night had he got that one in the end zone. Wholesale substitution is on the defensive line. Cissé in the backfield, going to get the direct snap, high snap again. He steps out wide, and he just makes a man miss, and he walks into the end zone. That is a one-yard touchdown from Rashid Cisse, and let's make it a handful of touchdowns, Plaz. That's, That's number five on the night. I tell you, what a move he put on the corner out there from me. I feel sorry for that young man. The kid did not have a chance, and he put one move, and then he just walked in. Oh. What a run, and what a drive there that Cisse just put on a show again. And that's going to, with this extra point, if Kuhn can get the extra point, that's going to make it 42 to nothing, and it does. It's right down the middle. Good kick. 42 to nothing. West M, 2.48 to play in this third quarter. We'll be back after a quick break. You're watching and listening to High School Football on ABC Sports. If you're looking for top-notch farm equipment service, repair, and sales, Ross Agri Mechanics is your go-to place. They're a local independent shop that offers Land Pride, Gravely, Arians, Farm King, Koiker, and more. Whether you need new equipment or repairs, they've got you covered. Check out their website at rossagri.com. That's R-O-S-S-A-G-R-I.com for more information. And good luck to all the local high school football teams. Game reset back here at Maysville. West M has just taken the second half kickoff and driven 80 yards in 12 plays. Nothing, and fan, nothing fancy. Extended the lead to 42 to nothing over the Maysville Panthers. They're getting ready to kick this thing off. Kuhn going to kick the football off here. Maysville going to get their first chance to touch it here in the second half, and there's only 2.43 to go in the third quarter. Short kickoff going to be caught at about the 25-yard line by one of the up men, and he's going to get it across the 30 to the 35-yard line where he's going to be stood up and gone. it's going to be marked at the 36-yard line, I believe, to start this drive. Maysville first and 10 now, their first possession of the second half. Return there by Dylan Stevens. Nice yeah. job, nice catch. And 175 get, pounds senior. You got to get north and south quickly in the kicker game, game, and he did. Got it to the 36 yard line. First and 10 now for the Panthers, and the clock is on the roll here, 224 to play in the third quarter. First time the Panthers have got to touch the football here in this second half. Quarterback, I'm just seeing if they've changed anything. Nope, it's still going to be Matthew Harper running the show. Saxton in the backfield with him. 
Throws a little flip pass and he gets it over, just over the lineman. And Hurdle's got the ball and he's running across the 50, 45, down to the 40 yard line. I thought that pass was going to get intercepted, but he got it over the outstretched arm of the linebacker. And that's going to be a WB Green insurance for the Panthers as they get it all the way down to the West M 38 yard line. A pickup of about 26 yards on first down. Maysville, best field position of the game for the Panthers. They're on the West Muskingum 38-yard line. Matthew Harper under center. And he puts his man Armstead in motion and hands it to Armstead. He cuts back to his right. He tries that right side, a little left cut. Maybe a gain of about three to the 35-yard line. Even if they would score... In this situation, we would still have a 30-point deficit, and that clock would continue to roll here in this football game. Maysville, second down and seven. They're not in a big hurry. I think they don't want to try to do anything out of character here, Plaz. They try to want, they want to get something positive going and just try to make something happen here, positive on offense. And I think they're starting to go against some of the uh, West Muskingum backups on defense. Flipped out to the left side. That's caught by. DeBolt, and DeBolt gets upfield with it. Nice throw out there to DeBolt in the flat. He makes the catch, gets forward to about the 34-yard line, so a very short pickup. It is marked at the 34-yard line, and the clock continues to roll now under 30 seconds to play in the third quarter. Maysville, third down and six, and yes, they're going for it on fourth down. Absolutely. <laughs> If it gets to that, they've still got a chance to make it here on third down. This time, Harper's got two receivers to his right, two to his left. Stacked up, and he's going to hand it off straight ahead, and nothing is happening there for Saxon. He is pushed back, either no gain or maybe even a little loss, and that's going to bring up a fourth down, and that's going to end the third quarter. What a quick win there, Plaz. Yes, it was. i tell you what, running clock makes a huge difference, and that's probably a good thing that the – OHSA put in a few years ago. Yes, it is. West Ham leads this one 42 to nothing. You're watching and listening to High School's Football on ABC Sports. Now located at 16050 McConnellsville Road in Caldwell, Ohio, Patrons Buckeye Mutual Insurance Company is a mutual insurance company established in 1896 for the purpose of providing insurance coverage to rural Ohio. They offer a product to meet your insurance need, whether it is for a farm, rental dwelling, home in town, secondary or seasonal dwelling, churches, or mobile home. They partner with Grinnell Mutual Insurance Company to offer liability coverage to package with their patrons Buckeye Mutual Policy. Call today at 638 3604 and follow them on Facebook at Patrons Buckeye. High School Football from ABC Sports and WYLE Cambridge, 107.9 Cambridge, 98.5 Zanesville, Nash Icon. Dave Hilliard back at Maysville. We're ready to start the fourth quarter. West Muskingum leading this football game 42 to nothing. And for all intents and purposes, this game has been decided a long time ago. But Maysville trying to get on the scoreboard here and get a little pride touchdown, perhaps. They face a third down and seven. This time they've got Harper back in the shotgun. He's going to roll to his right. Looking downfield, he's under pressure, and he flips it, and it's behind the receiver. He was looking for Case and Hurdle, and he couldn't find him there, and that's going to bring up now a fourth down for the Panthers. And again, he tried to throw that ball out. He was running towards the sidelines rather than getting squared up and just threw it behind. Tough throw. Maysville now fourth down and eight here for the Maysville Panthers. Clock moving, 11.23 to play in the football game. They need to convert this one. They may not get the ball back if they don't score here. Harper fades back. He's got a man, and it's maybe got tipped a little bit, but it's going to be incomplete. He was looking for DeBolt, nothing doing there, and that's going to be a turnover on downs. West Muskingum is going to take over the football and in control of the game of 42 to nothing. Something tells me we've probably seen the last of Mr. Cisse tonight, though. Well, 
that's what I was wondering, too. There's got to be a point where you don't want him running around out there. Exactly. You know, you've still got four more football games left. You're in great position playoff-wise. I believe they came in the day. They were second in the region. Number two in their yeah. region. And, and this uh, is going to help them. Even I mean, Maysville was two and three coming in, but Maysville is a bigger school. Yes. So that's going to help them. So Maysville now back out on offense. They've got a new quarterback, is out too. of the game. And they're going to hand it off, and now it's going to be a whistle blown. Number 15, Braxton Brownrig. I got to believe that's the coach's son. I would think so. <laughs> Similar last name. He comes in, and there's not too many Brownrigs out there, I'm sure. And there's a penalty flag. They call it a delay of game there against the Tornadoes. Their first penalty tonight. That's their first penalty. Wow. Been a clean football game from start it, to finish. It here. pretty much has been. You're right there. First down and 15 now. Brownrig in the shotgun. He's going to get the snap back. He's got a man in motion. Lots of new faces out there for West End. But Brownrig, he takes the snap. He pulls it down. He makes a man miss. Gets it out across the 40 yard line. He picked up that penalty yardage there, Plaz, and then some. And West End has got a man down on the field there, a lineman. Struggling to get up there, but Brownrig, nice job getting the snap. It was high. He pulled it down, still made the fake, and then took off on the run. I'll try that left side, and really just, I mean, that was a really nice play from Brownrig. It was. Yeah, they listed him at five foot seven, and I think that he had to go four foot. <laughs> well, there wasn't much. I mean, you know, he, he climbed the ladder to get the snap, and then he made a nice move, and Found a little crease there and shot forward, used his speed, got it out to the 40-yard line, a nine-yard pickup. So he got that first down, or excuse me, the penalty yardage back that they got on first down, that delay penalty, plus a little gain there. So it's going to bring up second now and manageable for their offense, second and six. And after the injury, that's one of the times the clock does stop on these running clock football games. We got it back rolling again here. 9.21 to play in the football game. Brownrig going to take the snap back here. He's in the shotgun, rolling to his left, trying to square his shoulders, but he's tuck it and run across the 40, down to the 35. He's run out of bounds, just short of that first down. Looks like he was pushed out at about the 35-yard line. They're going to mark him at the 36-yard line, I believe. So he's got him out at the 36-yard line. And it's going to be third and short here. It looks like they need a couple to keep the football here. 8.47, clock running. If they get another first down here, Plaz, that could be the last, <laughs> could be the last series of the football game. Brownrig hands it off. And it starts ahead across the middle of the line, across midfield and into Panther territory. And that's going to be the first down. And that was number 10. For the Tornadoes, that was Carter Wendland. He's done a lot of damage running between the tackles tonight. And again, he picks up a big WB Green Insurance first down all the way down to the 46-yard line of Maysville. Clock now moving, eight minutes to play in the football game. First down, West M on the 46-yard line. 10 seconds on the play clock, and West Ham not getting to the line of scrimmage yet, but I think the coach is going to have to call a timeout or they're going to get another delay a game penalty, and they do call it. He ran the play clock all the way down to one second before he called the timeout, so West Ham forced to use a timeout there, and it's the setting here is it's 42 to nothing. And they well, have when, a, when you have subs in like they do right now, sometimes there's some miscommunications. Yep, exactly. You don't have enough guys on the field. It, it, it's tough. Or... <laughs> They're like, hey, you're in the game. Oh, wait, wait, what, I'm supposed to be in on offense? Wait a minute. You know, might have surprised somebody over there on the sideline. So, but uh, West M and coming over here tonight, we were talking. I was really anxious. I wanted to see if Rashid Cisse is what everybody has been saying he was. And, and your he impression. did not disappoint a handful, five touchdowns tonight. Uh, he had 15 coming into the night, so he's got 20 touchdowns now for the season, and we've played six weeks. And, Dave, he only had nine carries tonight yeah. and two catches yeah. and got five <laughs> touchdowns out of that. <laughs> that is amazing. Brownrigg going to run the show now for the Tornadoes. He's in the shotgun. He's got two receivers to his right. 
He now puts a man in motion to his left. Low snap, and he's going to hand it off. Brownrig hands it off, and it went to Winland. Again, it was him again. I'm trying to see if that was 10 that was in there. Again, we've complained about the jersey numbers all night long. Yeah, and they've not got, now they that's, that looks like number see. 20. Yeah, that was number 20 that time. Ashton Ansel. Okay. Only got a couple there down to the 44-yard line. So we're going to bring up second and eight here, seven minutes to play in the football game. Brown Rake in that shotgun. Two receivers to the right. Snap back here, and he's going to run it himself. He goes to the right side, cuts back a little bit to his left, and gets it up to the 41-yard line, a short gain of about three yards. And that's going to bring up a third down for the Tornadoes. 41-yard line and 6.40 to play in the football game. I don't think this is any point in the game right now where they even think about punting even. I mean, I think they got two downs to get it, and if they don't get it, they're just going to turn it over on downs and be happy with that, Plas. I'm sure they're going to keep the ball on the ground here for two straight plays. You would think so. Brown rig in the shotgun. Puts a man in motion across the formation. Snap back. Rolls to his left, and he's being pursued. Flushed out of the pocket, and they bring him down for a loss. Nice defensive play there. Brings Brownrigg all down, all the way down at the 49-yard line. Nice play there from Maysville. Number 17 there, Cade Rock in there on that play. All the way back at the 48-yard line now. Loss of about seven now, and that's going to bring fourth and 12 up for the Tornadoes. And they are going to punt it here. That'll bring the punt team out here. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised that they actually tried to throw the football in that situation. But you want to give Brown Rig, the backup quarterback, a chance to, to throw the ball, you know, in right. these conditions. Right. Game conditions, you want him to have a shot at doing what he does as well. Snap back, punt is away, and it's going to run, hit the ground at about the 18-yard line. It's going to be picked up. Armstead does not like the fair catch. <laughs> <laughs> I will say he's got guts. Yes, he does. I mean, I'm doubting some of his decision-making, but he's got guts. He fielded it on the run, and he got ahead to about, they're going to mark that down at the 17, oh, excuse me, no, that's going to be at the 14-yard line, it looks like. So Maysville takes over in what's probably going to be their last possession of the football game. 5.20 to play in the game. And they caught a penalty. I didn't see the penalty flag, so that's going to push it all the way back to the five-yard line. Not the ideal starting position for what's probably going to be your last possession of the game, Plas. They called an illegal block in the back by the return team. Again, again that's just their third, just their third penalty tonight for 30 yards. Third penalty, and again, you got plenty of fresh faces out there, so. You know, your, your, your front-line kids are out of the football game, so sometimes those mistakes happen. Maysville now, first down, new quarterback in the game for them as well. And he's going to hand it off and maybe gets a yard out to the six-yard line. And that was Cade Rock as the quarterback, I believe, number 17. Yep, it is Cade Rock. He's now the quarterback for the Panthers. A gain of about one on that handoff, that rounding play to the six yard line, so second and nine. And the clock continues to move here, 4.40 to go in the football game. I suppose that's in relation to uh, Coach Todd Rock. Well, Todd Rock was in the stands and he won the 50 50 draw at halftime, so if you know Todd Rock, you might tell him he's buying tonight because <laughs> this is a pretty big crowd to be winning that 50 50 drawing. I bet it was a nice one. Handoff there to Landon Iden. He tries the left side and he's knocked out of bounds after a short game. And the ball's going to be marked at about the seven yard line, so. A gain of about one, third down and eight. Four minutes to go in the football game. And again, you're shuttling in the play. I know Rock won the 50-50 drawing, so if he, was one of, if he was a buddy of mine, I would think a phone call would be in order for him to buy. I would Definitely. think so, yes. Definitely. All right, handoff again across the left side. A little bit of room. Get across the 10, 15, 16, and that's going to be a first down. WB Green, WB Green Insurance first down there. Nice play there. Nice run there by number 31, Alex Ray, as he got across the 15, down all the way out to the 17. And that's a WB Green Insurance first down for the Panthers. 
A little bit of breathing room now. Out to the 17-yard line, 3.20 to go in the game. And the clock continues to move. Maysville with some backups here, just trying to get some positive flow going on offense. Rock rolls to his right. He's looking for a receiver. He's got a man downfield, winds up and lets it go, and he's got his man deep, and it's just overthrown. He was trying to find Cohen Llewellyn all the way down at the 45-yard line, but just a little bit overthrown there. Nice ball, oh, though, from Rock. He threw a nice ball, yeah. He got his shoulder square, and the receiver was actually open about five yards behind the defender, just a little overthrown. Just a little bit overthrown. He, he wound up and let it go, and as you said, he did a nice job getting his shoulder square to the line of scrimmage. And that's going to bring up second and ten now. 2.26 to play in the football game. We've got some play of the game and some drive of the game things to think about here when we come back. I know we haven't had that much time with this running clock in the second half, so we'll make some decisions on that one here. And there's a nice cutback and a run, and he's got loose, and he stumbles at the 40-yard line all the way out to the 45-yard line. Nice play there. Number five, Landon Iden. A huge gain all the way out almost to midfield. And if he just could have kept his feet just a little bit longer, he could have taken that one to the house and got the Panthers on the board here. 1.45 to go. Maysville, first down on their own 48-yard line. Cade Rock running the show now for the Panthers. Puts his man in motion. He hands it off, and he's going to be... Tries to get around that left side and turn the corner again, but Iden can't get it done this time, and he's run out of bounds around the 48-yard line, so little or no gain on that first down play. Usually that clock would stop on a play that's run out of bounds, but not in this situation as that clock rolls. A minute 15 to play in the football game. Rock doing a nice job here, running the show with the reserve squad here, basically, in this late stages of a blowout. It's 42 to nothing, West M. And now we're down under a minute to play in the game. Rock puts his man in motion. There's that counter play we've seen before. Nice cut. Tried that right side, and Llewellyn made a cut back to his left, and nice positive gain there of about five yards. Down to the 47-yard line in West M territory. 36 seconds to play, and this probably, Plaz, is going to be the last play of the football Could game. Could very well be, yes. Maysville up to the line of scrimmage, seeing if they can break into that scoring column here on perhaps their last play of the football game. Rock hands it off straight ahead. Across the 45, down to the 42-yard line. Alex Ray on the carry, and that's going to end our football game. The teams are going to line up and shake hands right here at midfield. West Muskingum Tornadoes, an impressive performance tonight. They have come over to Southtown and dominated the Maysville Panthers as they win this game 42 to nothing. And I, that was just probably one of the most impressive individual performances I have seen since I've been broadcasting be here for, for ABC. It was impressive. Exactly, especially when you take in consideration he didn't really touch the football that many times, but made the most of it when he did. Well, exactly. We'll be back with our People's Bank postgame report after this quick break. You're watching and listening to High School Football on ABC Sports. Members of Guernsey Muskingum Electric Cooperative love Southeast Ohio, where the hills roll, the roads are crooked, and the trees are plentiful. Keeping the lights on in our beautiful corner of the state is a challenge. A challenge Guernsey Muskingum gladly accepts and works hard to accomplish. Safety and reliable electricity at a reasonable cost are always our top priorities. It's our way of keeping the lights on for all members of Guernsey Muskingum Electric Cooperative, a Touchstone Energy Cooperative. Greg Motor Sales, located at 2840 South River Road in Zanesville, would like to wish all the local high school athletes good luck with their upcoming season. At Greg Motor Sales, they sell used cars starting at $39.95 and up and have financing options available. If you're looking for your next affordable and reliable car, give Greg Motor Sales a call at 740-454-7060 or visit their website, gregsmotorsales.net. 
I was sitting in my car and it wouldn't start. I lifted the hood and the engine was falling apart. What would I do? My eyes filled with tears. And on the radio, I heard of West 40 by pay here. Where for a little money down and a little each week, I could have a car, nice, shiny, and sleek. So I walked in the door and I put the money down. Now I got a nice car that I can drive around. West 40 by pay here will help rebuild your credit. The corner of Dewey and Route 40 in Cambridge, don't you forget it. West 40 Auto Sales, corner of Route 40 and Dewey Avenue in Cambridge, is home of a guaranteed credit approval, with most loans approved while you wait. Go to their website to fill out an online loan application, west40autosales.com. You'll also find their weekly special listed there. Dave Hilliard, Mike Velaziak, back here at Maysville. The West End Tornadoes have just come in and dominated the football game tonight as they are going to leave here with a 42 to nothing victory over the Maysville Panthers. And we talked about some things on the way over here, and uh, it was one of those It was we thought maybe Maysville, uh, it's time for them. They're maybe making a turning point. They were coming off a win. Could they play this West End team tough? And they did initially. A couple back and forth punts. We had an interception early in the game. Seven to nothing at the end of the first quarter. It looked like, you know, hey, this is going to be a pretty good football game. The, the defense held up early and for, then, for Maysville. And then the second quarter came. And unfortunately, it was a bad second quarter for uh, the Maysville Panthers as Rashid Cisse ran wild in that second quarter. Uh, just initially, I mean, just the athletic plays that he made and he threw the football, he caught the football, he ran the football. He just did everything. And, and does a nice job from his corner position defense. I mean, he's the total package. Exactly. And I'll break down the scoring plays again. Uh, um, first touchdown of the game, 59-yard pass from Anton to Cisse. 7 to nothing with 137 to go in that first quarter. All the rest of the scores took place in that second quarter until this last touchdown. So 62-yard run from Cisse. And in a four-play, 71-yard drive made it 14 to nothing with 11-10 left in that second quarter. 8.27 to play until half. Cissé scored on another five-yard run. Two-play, 24-yard drive. 21 to nothing with that point after attempt. Touchdown, excuse me. 3.10 left in the half. A 64-yard pass from Anton to Cissé. And that was just the one that broke the camel's back right there. That made it 28 to nothing. And then to add insult to injury, the Tornadoes added another touchdown with just less than a minute to play. Winland on a 20-yard run that time, and it was a Coon PAT as he did. He was perfect on all PATs tonight, and that made it 35 to nothing. And then in the third quarter, Cissé added one more touchdown just for good measure <laughs> on a one-yard run. That's all he could manage was a one-yard run. Gosh. And that was a 12-play, 80-yard drive to start off the second half. So they ran almost nine minutes off the clock to start the second half. And that ended our scoring at 42 to nothing. Plaz, just an impressive performance by that young man. And again, our post game tonight brought to you by People's Bank and all of our sponsors, Patrons Buckeye Mutual Insurance, Laborers Local 530, WB Green Insurance, West 40 Auto Sales, Greg's Motor Sales, Ross Agro Mechanics, Stone Ford, People's Bank, Valentine Insurance, 45 Logistics, and Guarantee Muskingum Electric Cooperative. Whew, I got through all this. Yes, you do. Well, we've got some things that we need to talk about here. First of all, uh, we've got uh, we've got a Guernsey Muskingum Electric Power lineman of the game. And this is the first time I've had this this year, but I know we've done this in the past. They like to honor the linemen. And, and should be honored, and but it, it's, ex, it's extremely difficult for two guys like us that's trying to call the game and do the stats and, and also watch the linemen. Yeah. But we think we've got two quality we candidates got one. We've got a couple here. And, of course, if it's a power company, you got to have a lineman. I get that. I get it. Uh, for West Muskingum, Cord McKenzie is going to be our Guernsey Muskingum Electric Power lineman of the game. And then for Maysville, Logan Wilhite is going to be our Guernsey Muskingum Electric Power lineman of the game. So congratulations to those two young men. A couple other things to think about. All right, play of the game, Plaz. Um, I, I mean, Cissé made so many. But I, I'm going to go back because it, it took the pass to the 64-yard pass from Anton to Cissé right there. The bay, they put him up 28 to nothing. It was kind of Cissé was on the side of the field right in front of us here in the press box. 
you could see the single coverage. The quarterback saw it. Snap, Cisse takes off, and I mean, it's over with at the snap, in my opinion, because he just blows by the cornerback and a nice throw, plenty of air under it. Cisse runs under it, touchdown. Thing is, you had several plays to choose from, <laughs> but they all involved Mr. Cisse. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to go with that as our, our People's Bank play of the game, and that was that 64-yard touchdown pass from Jake Anton to Rashid, Rashid Cisse. Uh, the drive of the game, and I, let's, I would have to go back probably. I'm thinking about, you know, the drive of the game in, in terms of numbers of plays. The drive of the game, really, in terms of a drive, was the first possession of the second half from West Muskingum. Yeah, because everything else was pretty much home runs. I yeah, mean, they hit, they hit the home run. Drive, so yes. the drive, really, and that was a 12-play drive, which once again ended up in a touchdown. And that was just the one-yard carry from CSA. But the drive of the game, that's brought to you from Greg's Motor Sales. So our drive of the game, that first drive of the second half, it was a 12-yard play, 12-play drive, went 80 yards. And that resulted in yet another touchdown, which extended that lead to 42 to nothing, which is also the final score of the football game. Uh, our other thing here, we had players of the game. We've got one from each school. And if you listened to any of the game or watched any of it, you know that our player of the game for West Muskingum is Rashid Cisse. I mean, hands down. There's, you know, we would have liked to have picked somebody else if we could, but it the, was impossible. The night that young man had, like I said, <laughs> was so few touches, but right. everything was electric anytime he had his hands on the football. Anytime he touched it, he seemed like it was going to the house. Um, and then let's go, and, and we were talking, what do we do? We need a player of the game for Maysville. And by the way, these are brought to you by Lock 9 Pizza, our Lock 9 Pizza player of the game. And their big thing is to come and try their Wangus burger. And I, I, I'm, I, I'm interested. I, I've got to yeah. go check it out because there's a picture of it on this looks flyer good, that they've it? given us. And it looks pretty good. <laughs> it's a Wangus burger with unlimited fries, so go hungry. But these young men are going to get a free pizza from Lock 9 Pizza, and they've got the Wangus Burger with unlimited fries. It's a 100% juicy Wagyu Angus blend. Whew, I don't even want to explain what that is. <laughs> but they also have wing salad, pasta, wedgies. Wedgies? Oh, I guess it's potato wedges, I guess. I would hope so. Subs? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't want them giving me a wedgie yeah. while I'm eating. But the Lock 9 Pizza player of the game for Maysville, we decided that was Wesley Armstead because, well, we liked his fearlessness back there on in terms of returning punts and also on his punting style with that rugby-style kick. I mean, he holds it to the last second, and it seems like it's going to get blocked every time. So we liked Wesley's fearlessness. And he also had a few catches there tonight on offense. He did. Um, uh, I think he had three receptions for 18 or 19 yards, something like that. So... He had a few catches. We liked his fearlessness. So, Wesley Armstead, you are the Lock 9 Pizza player of the game for the Maysville Panthers. Other than that, Plaz, I think we took care of everything. Our, our post-game report, again, brought to you by People's Bank. And, uh, you know, the scoring, um, as we said before, we wanted to see if Cissé was the real deal. And he is. Um, he was super impressive tonight, and he did it on very few touches of the football. Well, you look at their remaining schedule, too. They have the Crooksville at home next week, followed by road uh, trips to Morgan and Coshocton, and then the final game at home against Meadowbrook. So it's all small school opponents right. will be on their schedule. And I tell you what, they're, they're going to be a handful the rest of the year. They are going to be tough to handle. And, of course, they're looking now. It's like, hey, let's, we want to be as high as we can in our region for that playoff seating because you get to play at home when you get those games. They've made some trips in terms of playoffs. Yes, they, they went all the way down on the Ohio River last year to win a all the way down to Fairland, as a matter of fact. Uh, and they went all the way down there to win a playoff game. So, you know, I'm sure that would be on the coaching staff's mind. We want to finish in as far up as we can in these standings so we can get some home football games. You know, and they've got, like I said, they've got, they've got Meadowbrook on their schedule coming up, and, and Meadowbrook went in today as a number in the number 12 spot. Of course, right. they were getting beat pretty badly by John Glenn. Right. So, uh, but Ironton actually came in in the number one position in the region today who's, you know, perennial. That's, you, you just know, don't want to play Ironton. You don't want to play Ironton. No, you don't. But the, the, the Tornadoes came in at number two, right. a very solid number two. And like you said, even though uh, 
Maysville only has the two wins of being a bigger school. They're going to pick up some points tonight. Yes, they are. So interested to see how this team does on the way out and just how many touchdowns CSA can end up with on the season. Because, you know, every team's geared to try to stop him. I mean, they're trying to stop him. And it's, you know, what do you what do? You do? Well, yeah. Maysville did it for two or three plays early there in the, in the first quarter. Right. But uh, you're not going to be able to contain him for the entire game. Exactly, exactly. So, anyway, well, that's going to wrap everything up here tonight for us. The West M Tornadoes, impressive victory tonight. They take care of business. They beat Maysville, and Maysville's homecoming, 42 to nothing. And I'm Dave Hilliard, along with my man, Mike Blasiak, tonight, and our producer, director, do everything guy tonight. We appreciate Brett Klein tonight because he did it all. He set up all the equipment. He makes us look and sound. Well, I don't think he can make us look good. Maybe you, but not me. He can make <laughs> us. He can make us sound good. And of course, he takes care of all the timing and all the breaks. And he made sure we were set up here and ready to go at West Ham so, or at Maysville. So we really appreciate him. And again, all the Maysville folks here, they were super for us. They, they treated us well. And fed they, us well. They, they fed us. They gave us drinks. So uh, shout out to Maysville and that staff here. We appreciate their hospitality. One more time, uh, West Ham victorious, 42 to nothing over Maysville. I'm Dave Hilliard. Thank you. We appreciate you watching and listening to high school football on AVC Sports. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports.